Last we left off, after a pleasant meeting with Mike and into the Black Sea and an evening of hallucination-inducing fare, you agreed to avenge a fallen colony of their kin, burned by cultists of Nazul, known as the Defilers. With my Kinid guide, you entered the secretive mycelium-walled tunnels and made your way into this tower grotto. Uh, when you arrived, you found a devastating scene, and the only point worth delving into was the tower. Standing in the middle of this lake, which you found patrolled by a 15-foot-long shark-like creature, Decrane was able to provide some insights into the creature, but ultimately it was best to hope it remained sleeping. After some debate, you decided to use Tootsuite to all uh, fly over the water and pull Augustus gently across the surface upon a mushroom cap boat. Unfortunately, the creature was alerted, immediately darted towards the herring gun, devouring the boat, Tootsuite, and seriously injuring Augustus. Simultaneously, the pair of defilers atop the tower began to investigate, and through a combination of vortex warp and a crane's sharpshooting, they became fresh fodder for the creature, but gave Augustus an opening to flee. With the scaver fed and no further disturbance to the water, uh, it returned to his underwater patrol, and you all began to reconvene. Uh, during this, in a uh, stroke of ingenuity, Andy fired a pitten across the lake into the side of the tower with a catapult spell, granting you a solid point of contact through which you can make your way across and then uh, with your climbing gear scale the side of the tower to the top without alerting the beast. You now stand atop the open roof, a single hatch in the stone leads below. Some of your significant resources have been spent already, and your four Mykonid guides remain on the shore as we begin tonight. Uh, the four of you, as I said, atop the tower, the four Mykonids stand back on the shore. You do watch as the kind of faintly undulating glow of the night scaver encircles the tower in this like one to two minute patrol as it encircles, and there is, uh, as I said, just a single uh, hatch that leads below into the tower. Uh, it, the top of the tower is about 20 by 20, 25 by 25-ish square, just to give you a size. What are you doing? So glad I took notes. As a reminder, we have, I think you said at the end of the game, I don't know if I left it on the record. I think I have 30 minutes left to pass without a trace. I think that's what uh, I said. That sounds right, and you're actually a bear cat right now. Or you're right. So everything I just said to you was like kind of cute growls. <laughs> <laughs> no, Allie can talk to you. I can talk to you because I activated um, my uh, speak with animals. You know what? Actually, I need to kind of amend something. Is Pass the Trace a concentration spell? I don't think it is, but let me just check real quick. As long as it's not, then we're in the clear. Pass the Trace. Oh, concentration up to one hour. So uh, roll some saves. Just give me just give me one uh, constitution saving throw. You took like 20. I was like six. 22. I might have it in the thing here. It'd be a DC 13 at 26. Oh, I wish it kept right. the damage things in. OK, so yeah, uh, con save. How much was it? Ooh, 20, dirty. You're fine. I'm pretty sure it only took the one hit. It was the one shark bite, yeah. It was just one big shark bite. So uh, through it, you managed to maintain concentration, and we continue to this point now, uh, where, yeah, you are this uh, adorable, uh, if it's still not necessarily small, you're still a medium-sized creature, I believe, um, uh, bear cat, <laughs> this... Uh, I don't even know how best to describe it, but long prehensile tail, almost like porcupine-like long fur, um, Still kind of cute in the face. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, Enid, and you can still converse back and forth, given uh, she has speak with animals out. How you doing there? This is crazy. It's so cool, I can understand what you're saying. You know what else can? This is nuts. I look like a cat that's a bear. You're really cute. Thank you so much. I don't how do you like, I... how do you like having big claws? It's okay. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool having such a long tail. I was like holding on to, um, what was I holding on to last time? The wall. The wall. I feel like there was something important. I had to hold it on to bricks, tail. right? It was like, boom, boom. No, my little tail, I held on to something. And if you watched in the last game, you can figure it out. Um, it was crazy. This is really nuts. Like Ray came towards me when that thing was about to bite me. And then like, I feel like she like merged into me. And then I became this like cat bear. 
Whoa. So how can you long talk did... to me? What's happening? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. Um, how long do you think you're gonna stay like this? Uh, I don't know. Last time that shark bit me so hard, I d- d- changed out of it. Now I feel like, I don't know, maybe I could do this up to an hour before I get really tired. We can work with this. We can work with this. Should I stay like this? Should I try and change out? I would. No, 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 no. Unless they say otherwise, just keep it. It's fun. Uh, Aina, can you actually understand the, the cat thing, or are we just having fun? Oh, yeah, no, okay. no, no, no. He's all good. Okay. Enid, do you, it, when you talk to me, is it just yeah. chittering as if you're doing animal voices, or are you talking human and they can hear it? What do you think it is? Oh, for that's you? true. Uh, I guess I would be like, <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that because I think it's way funnier. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, you just doing a weird, a weird version of it. <laughs> like a chewy Freddy mix. <laughs> um, yes. No one has any idea what's happening. Maybe let them Perfect. know. I'll like listen at that hatch. Um, but do we want to like post up here and rest for a bit, or do we want to keep going? I don't know if we've made that much noise. Uh, I can ask them and see. Do you think they're freaked out? Oh, they're totally freaked out. They're totally freaked out. Cool. They think I'm losing it. I feel well. like maybe Decrane will respect me more if I like do cooler things. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Don't tell him I, I'm oh, trying to get his validation. I'm sure you already have it, though. I mean, come Don't on. Mind. This this is amazing. Come on. Okay. I'm going to go listen to this hatch. You tell them. You ask if we should rest here. Um... He says, should we rest here? <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm not hurt, but if we rest a little bit, I can get a little bit of magic back. That's always nice. I say um, we rest here. One question, though. Are we going to try to get the little mushroom guys back up here? Um, in theory, we could let them try... If we get, like, secure the rope really well on this side and, like, chuck it down to them somehow or, like, something, they can try to climb up or, like, um, Augustus's fun little tail can, like, loop around their waist and help give him some help if he wants to, like, ferry them up. I'm I just sit gonna... on my haunches and snap my little claw and I hold up the rope with my tail. I'm like, where, 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 where's the rope? <laughs> Look at that! Oh, the tail's great! You can understand us. What? Okay, that's that's helpful. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe, right? Because then these guys won. I feel bad because they brought us all the way here and then they, like, want to help, like, avenge this stuff. And um, we're not letting them do that. Uh, and two, I legitimately think we could use the help. Are we How on board? We... I... Out of game. I like this idea. I'm down for it. Yeah. yeah. Do we ca- can, do you have another spell slot? Is catapult a second level? Like it's a, it's a first, but I've used. What about Kev's bow? What if we tied a rope to the bow and tried to shoot it to the shore? How far is it to the shore? I mean, Kev already shot feet. a guy from here. It's nine shore. feet from top down to to the shore. Um, easier to do from here down yeah. than it is to shoot up. Long rope, six hundred foot max. Yeah, you're. Easy. The more question is, like, if the rope's heavy. But, I mean, they can also attempt to tie it to something. Yeah, sorry. I mean, like, the weight of it when trying to shoot something. But, um, yeah, we can try. May as well. We just got to try good so that you don't hit the water instead and wake up the monster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, let's try and tie the rope to an arrow, like a thick bolt. Maybe, like two or three arrows together that may like help like the weight or something and then shoot it what sure. makes the most sense here i mean uh, you could one one arrow will be enough to to do it's it's more about how well the attack roll is to like properly aim and properly give enough like weight behind the bow to give it the oomph to move uh and that's going to come down to decrane giving me an attack roll with his longbow come on dc all right I miss having guidance. Do you in our other warn coach? the Myconids? I don't know how we could, though, them? without shooting. Nope. Like, maybe I'm you guys gonna, wave I at them? I can try to get their attention and then be like, rope? <laughs> Hopefully they, they can see this. They will see it. Don't say a word. <laughs> 
Wait until the thingy's on the other side, just in case. 14 plus 7. Kind of a 7. 21. Easy enough. Sticks onto the other side. Uh, The mic can You shoot over easily enough. They move out of the way as they see it coming. Um, uh, It does not embed, uh, but they do understand the concept here and begin winding it around uh, a nearby kind of like signet, like a chunk of rock, like a heavy chunk of rock. Um, and it looks sturdy enough to to hold. The catapult spell embedding the pit in, in and, and even adding or tying it to the crenellation near the top um, gives a pretty significant um, tether across. Um, however, you watch as they kind of the Mykonids you're gathering, uh, sp- uh, you're all gathering, like there's not really a particular role here. They're just kind of clunky. They're a little clumsy. They're not the most uh, acrobatic. They're not the most adept of creatures. Now, this will be an athletics check to help to, to climb. Um, however, if they fail, they will fall into the water and that likely will be the end of that Mykonid. Hey man, that's on them. Is there nah, that's like, on them, bro. <laughs> no, but I'm saying you could, in theory, like, if you climb with them... If Augustus, if Augustus climbs back and forth and uses the tail to loop around one of them, uh, they will get advantage as you can kind of help them with your tail using... You have a climbing speed, so you don't have to make the check. Um, if, but you can give them advantage on their check. But it'll take a little bit longer because you'll have to do this individually back and forth with each of them. I just see Andy, Andy telling August that as a bear cat, he's just sitting, <laughs> looking at Ina, looking back at it, reluctantly puts his hand down, gets on the rope. You seem really excited about the fact that you can hold a rope. I thought, <laughs> stop, so, looks back, <laughs> she keeps going. <laughs> I uh, make my way down to them. Are we like a dog where you tell it to go to bed? It's like that is exactly the vibe. <laughs> And I am very uh, cautious. I am very worried <laughs> looking at the. F- what do we call this terrible shark monster again? A nightscaper. I'm very scared of this nightscaper as I'm going down. Uh, you don't need to make a check. Um, you are. Uh, you have a climbing speed. Okay. Um, you're built to climb. So this is not a problem for you. Um, and the like key element of this is like you're climbing on your own and you're just using your tail to give them like an additional aid. So still no check required from you, but you will all get to use advantage. Like I said, though, it'll become an individual climb back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it's going to take a little bit of doing. However, each of you can please roll with advantage an athletics check for your Mykonids. I believe they don't have any modifier, so I'm pretty sure it's a straight roll. God, I love early level D and D. This just brings me back to sitting around your kitchen trying to. Oh no! Roll. Well, that's a you have advantage. Okay, okay. First thing to remember. But roll again. Let's roll stop. again to resolve that, Kev. Let's see what we got. I feel like it's another nat one. Eight. <laughs> okay. It's not great. It's not great. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's, it's a zero on the strength. <gasps> So that's an eight for Decrane's way marker. Now, Kyle, before you want to do this, because that sounds mm-hmm. bad, do you want to decide who's going first of all of us? Like, because what if it goes really bad for one of them? I suppose that is fair. Because <laughs> um, if, if the first one fucks it, isn't then the it, shark's it, up. It's okay. Uh, I'm going to roll randomly and not tell you what the order Great. is. Love it. Love it. Okay, everyone, should we keep rolling our d20s for these little things? Everyone just keep rolling, and I'm going to record in my book who is yeah. up first. My dude got a 2, and then he got a 15. Nice! Okay. What are these two numbers? Uh, okay, so that's the... Okay. I gotta get some real dice out, just in case. Uh, okay, I have my order. So it was an 8 for Decrane. It was a 15 for Andy. August Enid. 16. Okay. Uh, with no adding uh, 13 for my little dude. Okay. Oh, wait, was it dex or strength? It does not matter. There's it's the, the, no <laughs> modifiers. No modifiers here. Uh, okay. So 
with Augustus's help, back and forth, you begin to climb up and down this rope, getting more and more used to this new form, which is kind of uh, the interesting and fun part about this, like kind of what seems monotonous is you're very quickly finding that this is so this is easy for you. It's actually kind of fun. Like, and you're you're really good at this. Uh, and it does have this kind of like fun vibe to like explore a new form. Uh, and you do feel a little warm and fuzzy inside as you do so. Uh, first to go is the torch cap. This kind of uh, illuminated mushroom uh, begins to climb and uses some of its like uh, it has it has arms it that it begins to kind of loop around, but it also uses some of the torch caps themselves that are on these kind of like um, like uh, extended stem like necks to kind of round around to help itself uh, hold onto the rope. And after a few minutes, makes its way up, followed as you make your way back down, followed by the uh, spotted hydra makes its way up to the top. Virgil! Uh, Augustus makes your way back down uh, to the point where um, what was your uh, weight marker? I think my guy's Meek. I love my dude Meek. Meek steps to the plate and you begin to help Meek make his way up. Uh, and then the weight markers are a little bit more difficult. Um, the cap of their own head gets in the way of their arms. Their arms can't quite reach out past the length that their cap is. So that's he's tough. Kind of, that's tough. It's not good. <laughs> the the tail is a must here. Gotcha. And maybe your affinity for your own chosen myconid helps meek across successfully that perhaps does not get translated to poor Cordis. Cordis? Halfway through, uh -oh. Cordis slips, and you don't have the strength to hold both the rope and the myconid. Do you let your tail let him loose? I mean, um, my gut reaction would just say I'm be holding to, holding to the rope. Like, the, the question is, do I let go with him to try and go? He slips. Oh, I see, and my falls. tail's on him. Your tail is holding him. Now, there's a point where he will slip and your tail could try and hold, and you could attempt to try and hold him, but you don't think logically in this millisecond of time that you- I'm new to this form. Through. New this one. Under 10, I hold on. Over 10, I let go. I hold on. Eight. Uh, make a strength check for me in your new form. Okay. Street, D20 plus strength. I have a plus two to strength. Stronger as a bear cat. Natural 20. The advantage here is... Uh, a natural 20, your prehensile tail is incredibly strong and your form is surprisingly strong. The disadvantage is the rope is not. Uh, mm -hmm. And as he sl swings under you and the, the rope begins to bow, it snaps and the two of you <laughs> slam into the tower wall, taking uh, two points of bludgeoning damage each. Okay. Uh, Kev, Kev, mark that down for your dude. Can we try to like start yanking up the rope? Uh, where the other end of the rope lands in the water, you see coming around the corner, oh, the scaver is beelining. Now the two of you are not in the water. You are up <clears> about <throat> like five feet from the water's edge. Uh, however, uh, I will need a athletics check for both creatures to climb up. So for Cordis and for uh, Augustus in bear form. Um, if you're using your tail to help Myconid, you have disadvantage, but he has advantage. I'll if do you that. do not use the tail, straight rolls. I'll keep the tail on and I'm just so scared to start climbing. So, so with disadvantage. disadvantage for you, advantage for Kevin. Straight D20 rolls, please. All right. Ooh, I guess plus two for you. They're pretty bad. Mine is... Seven. Mine's just five. That's going to be a fail. Like at zero, I think. Oh, wait, so he has advantage, Kev. Sorry. He has advantage, but no modifier. Uh, 10. Okay. Uh, it's right on the edge. With a five, 
what I'll say is um, you just can't continue up. Like you just can't get further up. Um, and with a 10, um, Cordis is able to like begin to climb and pass you. Um, and the two of you are maybe 10 feet up, Like you didn't make any real progress there. Um, and the scaver has ripped the, has made it to the other side and like bit and tore free the rope from the other side. And you hear it snap and you hear a rock like, <clears throat> crumble as it's like strength rips the rope from the rock those of you above are watching it now spin and swirl back to where um towards the tower and is making its beeline towards you guys you know it can jump at least 10 feet can um i like smack in it like a uh, distraction era somewhere somewhere a uh, distraction era not here in the water somewhere near the other way uh, uh what do you want me to do Arrow, that way, somewhere, okay. in the water. Big okay. splash. Uh, I'm gonna go and aim it to the opposite direction. Sure. No uh, attack roll needed. You're okay. you're a trained archer, just shooting in a lake. You know, you're not hitting a specific point, so easy enough. You draw an arrow and fire, um, and you guys watch as the scaper is like just about to like crest out of the water. You see the back begin to emerge. It's it's fin, it's dorsal fin kind of emerging already before it dives off in the direction of this very faint splash. Um, with enough time, both of you are able to climb up and with the help of the rest of the team, make your way back to the top together. All eight of you. How much time do you think that took? Uh, it would have been probably five minutes apiece, so looking at about 20 minutes. So 10 minutes left, I'll pass it out of trace, and 20 minutes into my wild shape. How, um, do you get your wild shapes back on a short, Scott? I do. Yes. I do. Which is good. So it might be worth doing a short rest. What I will I also ask you past the trace would be gone, but I'll just before we get to, to this point, tower. I would like a stealth check from all eight of you. Ooh, five. Plus ten. Plus ten. Bearcat stealth stats. Stealthy as I thought. Bearcat. Thank you. Plus ten. Ten. Thirty-one. Oh, damn. Oh my God. Oh, because we had ten. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, 19 for me, and then my boy Meek. 21 for Meek. Okay. 25 for me. Okay. 13 for me. Damn. With with 10? I rolled a 2 on the dice. <laughs> um, it's tough. Out and here. the Mykonid's stealth is plus nothing. So 22 for... Uh, so what are you guys doing? Can I, I wanted to do it before, despite being tired, can I move myself over to the hatch and knowing that caused noise and put my little bear cat ear to the hatch to try and listen? Mm-hmm. Make a perception check. <clears throat> I have six to perception on bear cat. Fourteen. Uh, you put your ear close and really try to focus and listen. You hear what sounds like the shifting of of like a creaking of wood like a table or chair like being weighed upon you don't hear much more than that i'll look over to enid and point with a claw at like the thing i'll move back over to you i heard some i heard something there was like a creak oh okay they could be like down there, like maybe they're waiting as a trap to like get us, or maybe he was, or they, or she, were like putting something against the trap door or the hatch to stop us. And I like heard like the sound, kind of like tiny of some moving, maybe. I'll well, also say really quickly, as you got close to the hatch and with that perception roll, um, you do notice that the hatch is closed. Um, it's wood with like reinforced iron. Um, you know, bars, uh, and it does have a, an iron lock, like an old iron lock that is closed and locked. It's locked right now? Yes. Interesting. Well, that's good. They couldn't get up it. I mean, they've locked us out, but 
they also can't presumably get up to us. Lee, did you hear that? Were you able to hear with your headphones? Okay. So we could short rest here potentially. It would be nice to have my wild shapes back and even my ray abilities back. And I know Kev gets a lot of stuff, his fighters. And I could get a spell back. I, I don't will, know if Ally gets anything back. I'll change out of my bear calf form just to make it easier. Ray will kind of just come spinning off of me. Do we want to take a little short rest here? There's the lock on there. Even if they're down there waiting for a trap, we could kind of decide how we want to approach this in the next like half hour, maybe an hour. Yeah, I think if I just take a quick and quiet rest, yeah, um, just a bit, um, and then uh, yeah, see if anyone does anyone have any ideas. Everyone, talk to your mic in it and see if they can do anything cool. Because they have like spores and stuff. Like I'm just reading mine. 20 foot radius of spores extends from the mic and these spores can go around corners and affect only creatures with intelligence of two or higher. Vector creatures can communicate telepathically. That's just the telepathic mm. talking spores mm. um, that they've experienced with you. Each of them all have that, but they do each have a secondary action ability that is typically a once a day spore based ability or um, element of their of their form hmm. um can i just com torch. confirm something kyle about that mm -hmm. so i have two so does that mean he gets each of those one a day or like mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. there's a torch flare the pacifying spores those are both once a day uh and they can he can also do like a punch attack mm -hmm. uh Sick. alana or uh, ali spotted hydra uh, he's got a like pummel, but he can do two pummel attacks um, and has a pacifying spores that can do a stun of, uh, effect. Um, and the away markers both have pacifying spores and a befuddling spore that does a pseudo confusion like spell. Five foot radius sphere centered on self. <laughs> so you could almost try and treat one like a grenade pop the hatch, toss this guy in, he he pops if there's anything around there. Not a bad idea. It's like a flashbang. I will say actually pretty much the range of all of their abilities is within five feet. They need to be up against whatever it is they're doing. Whatever they're fighting. So pacifying and befuddling. Pacifying is stunned for a minute, that's good. Or this one's confusion for a minute. What are you? Blind one, that's 10 feet. Blind? Cool. Ooh, 10 feet? But, cool. Yeah, and it's called the Torch Flare and the Passive Eye also, the Passifying Spores. So those yeah. are all good to, yeah, to try to use those. Holly, what was your Hydra one? What's your first one for the Spores? Uh, it's, uh... Distress? Uh, and... sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Distress, and then the second one is Rapport. Are there ones on the other side of that? Under like actions? Uh, actions are multi attack, pummel, and the pacifying spores. Oh, so you, yours is like a beefy boy. He's like an attacking yeah. guy. He does two attacks, but also the spotted hydra has, instead of having two spores, uh, he can spider climb. Oh, cool. He can be a little Spider Man for us? Sick. Mm -hmm. He's going to climb up on walls and upside down on ceilings without needing to make a check. <laughs> I'm so sorry, cool. why did you not use that? Because he <laughs> couldn't cross the water. Yeah, well, he couldn't cross a little water. And then by the time we got to the wall, we forgot completely. <laughs> Realistically, it wouldn't have helped on the rope so much. Need more surface area. Yeah. Uh, but if he fell like uh, Cordis did, he would have been fine. Leah, what if we used your guy? First, we had to figure out how to get this thing open because it's locked, but... We could drop your guy in as a literal flashbang. His little light thing goes off, and then we jump in after him. We've got to make sure that there's actually someone there. Sorry, the cat's being very loud. That's why we keep muting. Um, you know, there's actually I someone there. Oh, oh, actually, I might have a way to do that. Let me lock in my, my stuff. I also have a thing that can potentially blind multiple people, but it's only really good against a big group of people. I will also just point out, like, the pacifying spores as much as you have one a day, you have four times to try that. Yeah, yeah so it might be worth it. 
That's a really good point. So, I mean, even if we huck down alleys, because if he goes down first, he doesn't, like, do anything. Well, he's the most likely to punch someone the next turn. Do they all have the same hit points? Yes. All other stats Ooh, are the same. So few. Okay. Every other stat is the exact same. It's just the actions and uh, the, the spotted hydra has, has the spider clip. Don't say okay. so few. That's my hit point total. <laughs> is it? Do I have more hit points than you? Yeah. Yeah, you're strong. Oh. The strongest wizard alive. Strongest cleric alive. Well, uh, how do we feel about starting a short rest, Kyle? Can we start the yep. rhythms of a short rest? Okay. Uh, easy enough. You guys begin to settle in to this kind of quiet recuperating moment in this kind of odd tension filled uh, element staring down this hatch like knowing it's locked but who knows like what surprises could await uh, the Mykonids sit silently awaiting in this kind of odd sensation just not sure of they're not combative so like this is an odd sensation for them they're definitely following your direction and lead. Um, you do feel past of the trace begin to wane and suddenly the sound and light around you begins to kind of return to you as if like uh, your ears had popped and sound mm -hmm. is returning and all this kind of thing. So you can tell that past of the trace has faded. Um, however, you're able to go through a short rest uh, unimpeded. Let's do it. Take None of you have. Uh, I guess you could you could burn one of your hit dice if you wish to heal those two hit points. I just did. Um, yeah. So you get one hit died to do that, and then uh, everybody gets whatever your short rest abilities are. You get back, um, Kev. That's that's big for you, and two wild yep. chips back for uh, Augustus. I don't think Ali. Unfortunately, you get anything back on a short um, in terms of spells. Yeah. Uh, as a ranger, I don't think so. And I, you don't really have any other abilities that have been used. Um, one thing of note that has been used is too sweet, unfortunately, until you long rest. Um, cool. He's a he's a one summon a day. Okay. Let's see. He's, he's already and, eaten, though, right? He's around? Didn't he no, get eaten? He, he got eaten, yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's, and I've already you know. used Bless, and I think my Misty Step. So, Al, you still have your Misty Step, but I I used, still have my Misty Step, yeah. You might have your hex too, actually, but I used yep. mine. Yes. And we still have rabbit hop. Yeah. Which maybe I used once, but as a bonus action, we can make a really big. Which is not um, a limited use, is it? Or is it? Yeah, it's just twice. Prof proficiency. Twice. It's proficiency bonus. Okay. Yeah. And we have we lucky footwork, which I've never used, used, which is when you fail a deck save, you can use your reaction to roll a D4 and add it to the save. Mm, that's cool. Something to keep in mind. Okay, wild shapes get back. I get a spell slot back. Fuck yeah. All right, how do you want to approach this? We waited these guys out. So here's the thing. We don't have a Hondo the Blue. We don't have a lockpick rogue. <laughs> or the backup half rogue. Uh, and I think even Lavender had thieves tool proficiencies. We got none of that. Just um, <laughs> the door down, we go right through. It's a lock on the door, though. It kind of ruins the... Remember how we were all stealthy? Like, get the surprise on him? Stealth is over. Now we got to break it. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're your right. All the time. We hit one obstacle. Fuck stealth. <laughs> <laughs> the the stealth Batman way. Um, yeah, none of us also have like an axe. I'm trying to think of how we'd like bust the door down. I don't have anything. And I might be. No, Allie's stronger than me, right? I was going to say, I might be our strongest character. I don't think that's true. I have a minus one. Do you have more than that? I feel zero, but for some reason yeah, I thought you do. it was high. <laughs> I... Yeah, like I could try and burn the door and then we could burst in. We said it was wood. Mm -hmm. um, could also try and use a staff to try and like pry some of the lock stuff off, just like hammer into it. Well, I have Primal Savagery, which actually does acid. Mm -hmm. So that might be something oh. to try and use on the lock. Are there, um, not even on the lock, are there hinges visible or no? Uh, n no, because it would hinge. No, wait, down. it would hinge. It would hinge down. So no, they'd be on the so, other Yes, you're right. Okay. I can just do it on the lock itself, though. Just try and rake my, like, acidy. We flavor them, like, solary claws on that. Yeah. Yeah. 
The only damage one a cantrip I have is psychic damage, so it will not harm a door. Yes, uh, mind sliver this thing. Just get the lock. Uh, the um, acid uh, of primal savagery would would do damage to the lock. Um, two things of note: obviously, it's a it's an iron lock. It's metal, so it does have a, a relatively decent AC. Um, however, the bigger concern is the stealth aspect of it. It's gonna be loud. Um, yeah. Wait, 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 wait! Didn't we find a key on one of the bad guys? I was going to ask if we ever looted the bad guys. I don't know if we did. You didn't loot them because no, they, they got eaten. The I wondered if both did. Okay, good to know. Yeah. They, they were eaten. Eat you didn't I find wanna... anything on them because they were wrong. We found a key at some point, but that might be our other gate. <laughs> <laughs> a completely separate campaign. There's always a key floating out there that was in some guard's pocket. <laughs> Who knows what it's for? I don't know what key you're talking about. You don't have a key to this lock. Uh, my stealthy claws, my spooky claws might be better than Kev slash the crane just shooting the lock several times with his gun <laughs> yeah Which i know he, i know he's itching to do so that would work for sure okay it would be very difficult to be stealthy well someone had silence which uh, i think is a third level spell isn't it it's a second I, level spell oh well i didn't take it i don't have it i'm gonna talk to meek about if i start doing this and the hatch flies open can you jump in and spore them with your uh, stunning spores? You got it. God damn it, Meek, you're a hero. I do whatever is asked of me. And what's asked of you is heroics. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I claw the stupid lock. I hope we're ready to go, because let's get this party started. Waddles over, ready to jump in. My little bunny claws turn into little bunny paws turn into solar claws, and I start hacking up this thing. Go ahead and make a spell attack roll. Cover me, crane. I got you. Uh, 15? 15 just hits. <laughs> Jesus. That would have been so embarrassing to say it at crane <laughs> and then miss it. Uh, eight acid damage to start. With one good swipe, you find that the lock is, it's an old lock. And there was like a decent amount of rust that has accumulated, um, though it was still hardy, not many hit points. And you slice it and it just blasts apart. It is loud. If you want to try and go ahead and make a stealth, you uh, you can. It is going to be a high DC. I mean, I'll try. If you're going to give it to me, I'll try. Because it's going to be a nat 20. Here it is. No, it's the it's 13. You all hear it kind of ringing about the cavern, just like, and then it and splashes into the water in pieces. Uh, however, it doesn't immediately uh, fly open. It still needs to kind of be unlatched and pushed, but Meek just instantly just like pushes down and drops into the room. <laughs> Bless him. Bless Meek. Let's go. He's a hero. Uh, make an acrobatic check for Meek, please. Come on, Meek. Not with my stats. Just straight d20 roll. Yep, I had to check, even though you... Uh, three. Uh, he suffers uh, five points of bludgeoning damage as he does Oof. not climb the ladder and just falls hard. Okay. Tough out of here for Meek. Okay. You don't see anything from above. You see a, a, a dimly lit room with like torchlight lit room. You can see a ladder that goes down that Meek just dis, dis, disregards uh, <laughs> and then falls. Um, he is not within five feet of what is in the room. How do you want to play this out? Would you let, like Meek just run in or is anyone going to follow in immediately following him? I was envisioning it like Meek, I think I said, if you see someone let loose the spores and so he falls in, it was pretty dramatic. I didn't even know he was going to jump in. So I think I'm just kind of stunned. I'm not following quickly. I didn't realize he was going <laughs> to slam down. Okay. Uh, then just a quick roll of initiative for Meek and uh, we'll see how this plays out. Any of us Meek. <laughs> Just for like the first initial round. Yeah. And then uh, we can open it up to the wider crew. He would add nothing to initiative, right? Because it's not nope, sure. 18 for Meek. Uh, he does manage to go first in this instance. He's, he's feeling good. Meek uh, pulls himself up uh, however, even with half movement, is able to cross the room to get within five feet of the lone uh, uh, occupant. 
Uh, and if you wish, he can use his pacifying spores. Hell yeah, let's do it. He's got a dark vision 120 feet, pacifying spores to DC 11. Con? Con save, yeah. It is an 11, unfortunately. Oh, save goes to the caster or the person. You watch me run out of sight from uh, Augustus's perspective, but you hear this kind of, and you can faintly see the aura of, of his spores go out which should trigger you to know that there is a creature inside. Uh, and you then all hear this voice say, Boy, another one he is. Let's go. Oh. And then followed by... Something. <laughs> oh. Uh, just two, like, heavy, like, thudding pounds into what you can imagine is mushroom flesh. Uh, Meek is about to suffer. Come on, Meek, you beautiful bastard. 21, uh, so 15 bludgeoning damage and 6 necrotic damage. Um, guys, guys, Meek's dead. Meek died. I thought we had 22 hit points. Yeah, he did. He fell in the room. <laughs> oh. He took 5 oh. damage just falling down. Don't worry. The good news that. is all of the other magnets can sense he has been brutally murdered and assaulted <laughs> because of their distress force. They can, in fact, all suddenly let out this just sonorous, like, uh, whale cry. Uh, of sentient life know. dying. Great. Meek is dead. <laughs> Fuck me. You know what? He died like he lived at 100%. <laughs> Do it for Meek. Um, <laughs> do you all <laughs> pursue? I'm just, my, like, my sister. Let's hear it out. I'm just picturing <laughs> tiny little things and you're just going like, like <laughs> It's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's not It was savage. Sad. Yeah, it was bad. Sad. Uh feeling brave i would have jumped in now when i heard the when i heard the oh, another one of you fucks and then that i would have jumped in all right i would like everyone to roll initiative at this point fucking go as initiative kicks off augustus uh is the closest though i don't know if initiative will uh, align with what i have set up here um you can see the drop is about a 10 foot ladder down um to climb is uh, even with the ladder is like the half speed of climbing just it's a slow process to climb you can freely jump if you wish uh and potentially suffer a little bit of damage to get down faster but we'll see how this plays out initiative 25 to 20 20 to 15 19 uh 15 to 10 14 Thir 13 okay where's my sister six and then uh, we're ruling that the mic in, is, uh, in which you are controlling act after your turn. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to use Meek. It's going to be sick. Uh, okay. I have Meek, to like... Meek, buddy? Where are you? Every time I have to like like cognitively stop and like write the right character name that I'm not yet used to writing for initiative. I know. That I'll all call. <laughs> Allie, either Alana or Raleigh. I know. So. It's just like second nature for me to call her Alana. <laughs> or Raleigh. Uh, okay, so jumping in, uh, following the death of Meek, Augustus, you do have top initiative. Do you yeah. climb or jump? I said jump, so I'm going to stick to what it was. Acrobatics check for me. You got it. Five. Uh, you take two points of bludgeoning damage. Damn it. And land prone. Great. Stand up. You now have 15 feet of movement. He's across the... What do I see, by the way? So as you jump into the room, you can see that there is a kind of uh, sort of common area. There's like a wooden bookshelf, uh, two wooden bookshelves along the uh, right walls, a long like picnic style table to the left with chairs. There's a, a hearth at the far side of the room that you can see has like faint embers burning in it and a pot sitting above. Um, on the table, you can see there are um, kind of a couple of dishes where it looks like this figure just finished like eating or was cooking or doing something. Um, there are a couple of other tables and chairs and crates and things in this room. But more importantly, on the floor, you do see 
meek. Um, the mushroom cap split in two and clearly destroyed. And lifting from his corpse, you see this shirtless and thick with heavily scarred muscle human. He wears leather trousers tucked into heavy work boots and a leather apron. Uh, you see it around his waist, a number of tools and weapons. And lifting from his corpse, you see the head of a, uh, a raked pointed flail. Seeing that so mad, my hand's going to crackle with fire. And I'm going to say, you killed a hero. And I'm going to throw produce flame at him. Go ahead, make him deck. Ooh, 21. Hits. Uh, six damage. I forgot you don't add anything to it. Uh, yeah, you watch uh, a little surprise. He goes to raise a shield uh, to, to kind of protect, but doesn't fully get it up. And you do kind of singe the side of uh, of his face and neck a little. Um, he's got this kind of like longer, bushy kind of beard that you watch kind of sizzle and burn uh, as he looks over to you with a smile uh, and a sneer. And he pulls down that was kind of resting atop the head. This uh, top half of a bone mask. He pulls it down over his face with just a grin beneath and takes the damage like it's nothing. Yeah, hide your stupid fucking face. Um, how <clears throat> tall up was the drop that I just did? About 10 feet. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do some uh, fucking insane. Can I use the rest of my movement to do my rabbit hop to try and jump back up? I, well, what's your, how's your rabbit hop work? Uh, as a bonus action, you can jump 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks. You can only use this trait if your speed is greater than zero. You can use it two times and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Yeah, I think that, I mean, it doesn't require you to like move five feet and then leap. You know what I mean? Like how the normal jump rules would work. I think it's just a like flat literal rabbit hop. Yeah, you can leap up to the edge and get out of the way. Yeah, maybe I will take one like step up that rung and then jump up so I can like clear it and then like fall on top of the tower again. Uh, you just hear a chuckle from the man across the room who stands like maybe six, six. Yeah, I don't want to be fucking in one on one. Pretty with imposing. This guy. Yeah, no <clears throat> I will also point one other thing out um, at the bottom of where you were standing is a continuation down another level. Ooh, interesting. Okay, cool. I guess is that would end your turn. Um, full move, action, and bonus there. Meek's dead. There's a guy. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Uh, that brings us to Decrane. You are going to go next. Can't wait for this, Decrane. I'm going to... I want to get close to him. You got to go down the ladder. Do yeah, you yeah. climb or leap? I leap. <laughs> Make an acrobatic check, please. Five. Oh, What's not this super total with your acrobatics? Acrobatics five. Ten? Ten? Okay, so you don't fall prone, but you do take the damage. <laughs> uh, you're going to take two points of bludgeoning damage. However, oh, uh, as you, uh, he had rolled initiative higher than you. As you drop down, he uh, uses his held action to swing his flail twice at the next uh, combatant who approaches him. Uh, two attacks against you. Oh, God. That's going to be an 18 and a 7. Nope, and a 9, sorry. An 18 a and a 9? Uh, so 18 hits at 9. <clears throat> okay. You uh, got this. You, you got take... This seven points of bludgeoning damage and four points of necrotic damage. Jeez. And uh, as he brings the first one down, catching you a little bit unawares, uh, it catches you hard. He swings around uh, with this, like, you know, it's a it's a classic flail. It is on a chain uh, being held in his offhand, his shield in the left hand, this in his right, uh, and this pointed, uh, like, iron, rusting iron ball full of spikes and spines. The second uh, attack, he swings around and misses you. Um, however, it still grazes you enough, and there's enough uh, like iron and um, rust that it does leave like a scratch and scar that does still deal you three damage, even on a miss. 
So seven. It does deals eight. damage on a miss? Oh fuck. Oh boy. So I've taken a lot of damage. So you took what was it? Seven, four, and seven, two. four, three. So fourteen. <clears throat> okay. Low level D and D, baby. And did you heal up before this started? I was full. Okay, was great. Okay, good. Okay, good. Seven. Uh, that was his held action. Uh, it is now your full turn. You only use movement to drop in here. So. Okay, I'm just gonna. I just want to nonchalantly pull out my gun, you know, like a Sicario, and just like <laughs> shoot him in the head. <laughs> Uh, oh my God. You're gonna have disadvantage, won't you? Don't you have disadvantage within five feet? You will have disadvantage within a close range shot. I'll take the risk. Okay. I love it. I love it. Make an attack roll with disadvantage. All right. Get it. So first roll. Eleven. Okay. Okay. And second roll. Seven. What's the? What's your bonus? I don't think it's enough. Uh, it is a seven. Fourteen just misses. Oh, yet. Uh, point blank, you go to raise the pistol to shoot, um, and uh, already he's with the the mask up and the shield just kind of just pushes out of the way as it fires and just and it echoes in the room so loud. I can't use second wind, can I? Yep, as a bonus. Oh, I get so I okay. I'm gonna use that. Yeah, definitely. Eight, uh, nine, yes. Six. So you heal eleven, um, and uh, you have three shots left in the star wheel. Uh, do you stay there or do you move? Uh, can I move without taking like? You can kind of circle around him, so you could come over, like, to like this position here. Yeah, I'm okay. Just or even like so in here if you want. Uh, okay, from Decream, we go to Andy. Oh, actually, okay. sorry. sorry. Your uh, Mykonid, um, yeah. if you wish. Corpus, jump in. If you got your uh, Mykonid. Kev. I do have my Mykonid, yeah. Do you want your to send him in? Guy can go. Yeah, yeah, I want him in. Does he leap or climb? Uh, I think climb, because I don't think he can survive. <laughs> He's seen how bad it's been. Oh, look at him. He climbs down and uses uh, half of his movement to do so. Actually, it's double speed. So it'd be 20 feet of movement to climb down safely, um, which I think might be their full move. Yeah, yeah so that's, 20, yep. That's his full move. Okay. Um, but he is within five feet of the creature, um, of the guy. Quick, quick check. He's mm -hmm. the Black Sea Myconid Waymaker, Waymark? Way marker, yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so he can use his action for, he can just make a headbutt attack. He can do the befuddling spores or pacifying spores. Oh, let's go with pacifying spores. You got it. Love it. Because it's within five feet. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. That rocked from like a natural one and then right back to a 13. That passes. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, a decent roll. And um, looking at this guy, you can see like he's he's pretty tough. He's pretty beefy. Um, constitution is going to be his game for sure. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, he you unleash the spores, uh, and he just kind of with the mask on, just kind of laughs and just doesn't seem to pay it any mind. That'll take us to Andy. Okay, can I now that he's closer to the base? Can I see him without going down there? Uh, he would have three quarter cover, but yes. How does that work with a cantrip? Does it attack roll? No. Then it doesn't matter. Save. As long as you can see him. Great. I'm just gonna try to mind sliver this guy. You got it. Uh, hey, there's that natural one I just said. Hey, pew pew. Okay, uh, is oh well, one point of damage. One lone point. But he also gets a negative D4 on his next saving throw. Okay. So I will put a G4 to try to remember that. Uh, right. Yeah, try and keep, keep that in top of mind. And uh, do you have any bonus or want to climb down or move? Um, I think I'm going to kind of um, stay there. <laughs> Because I don't really want to get down. I am wary of 
with Kevin down there all by himself, but... He's got Cordis. Yeah. And I don't think my little, my little dude, he can't get all the way down, so I don't want him to, like, block up the ladder for anybody else. He could be on top of the other guy's head. I think if he would block up for everyone else. <laughs> if he leapt down, uh, he could... I don't want um, him to leap down. He has a zero dexterity. He's gonna hurt himself or land on somebody else. It went great for my guy. I think that's my guy, it. My guy died. Me, me died. I did. I did one point of damage in my turn. Well, moving on. Ali's turn is coming up, but do you want to do anything with your mic in it? I don't think there's anything for him to do right now. Okay. Then. So he's a coward. <laughs> is that what you're saying? He what just needs to be in melee, or he has nothing else to do, and he can't Esper get in melee. is a coward, is what you're saying. Actually, okay, you know what? We'll do this instead. Could he move past the other dude and just use his full movement? Uh, only if he jumps down. So he, this is the only way to get around the other guy? He can climb, but he'd be on the ladder. Can he climb halfway down the ladder and then kind of, like, try to jump? Uh, yeah, that's cool. I want to use his action as movement. Uh, sure. Yeah, okay, I'll allow that. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, I just, yeah. Just get him, like, over to, like, on that little table, that's the picnic table that's right there. He would have just so he's, like, in the room. He looks so cool! Yeah, he's pretty sick. I'm really glad we did this, because Kyle spent a lot of time trying to get these minis. <laughs> now, wait till you see Meek's mini. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> His mini is right there. It's right he's there. Just... He's that's dead. a. He's I think that's dead. a garbage can that got knocked over. Wait, wait, TC makes me. You're gonna love it. Uh, okay. Well, it is Allie's. Uh, it is Enid's turn. Um, if she wants to just try and shoot from above, Kyle, you roll it. Okay, I'll do it with a cur- her character sheet, so it'll be uh, on the books. Let's shoot uh, this guy, bow style. Longbow attack. Hmm, that's a thirteen. No, uh, not that gonna hits. Hit. That's that a very hits. alley roll. Let's be honest. No. It's a very alley first round roll. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't have any bonus actions that would be worth it, and let's not put her into danger. But then she'll crit the devil. That's how her girl rolls. That's it. Mm-hmm. Might have to might have to cut that out. Spoilers for Wild Cards campaign one. <laughs> Meh. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna, gonna watch have... that episode. It's fun. Uh, what I will say is. I think it would be fair for Enid to have uh, Virgil make his way in because he can spider climb mm. his way like over onto this yeah. side and come down this way. Oh, Sick. he's so cool too. And he can spider climb it. It's just my kids are in. a vampire-ish dude and a bunch of mushies. <laughs> I love it. Uh, top of the round, Augustus. Okay. Could I go down the ladder and mm-hmm. shoot ranged from, like, if I went down five feet, could I shoot ranged? Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll Just cost that. double move to, like, climb, so it's ten feet to go five. Is there any way I could get an advantage on him if I spun around? I don't think I have the movement to get on the other side of him from that mic in, right? The only way you could do it would be to climb and then leap over from the ladder and land on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you have, like, without having to use your bunny hop, like, you can make an acrobatic check to make that jump. It's not so far. It's about 10 feet. Let's do it. That's way cooler. I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to jump off. Acrobatics is only nine, but I'm going to do my lucky footwork for my reaction here. So lucky footwork, when you fail a death dex, you can use your reaction to roll a d4 and add it to the save. For a save? Oh, is it only for a dex save? Oh, you said save. You're right. You're right. So it's, it's just, just an nine. acrobatics check. Yeah, just nine on the check then. Uh, okay, so how do I want to rule nine? <laughs> either the table just <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like either you land, Topple but the, the table. table topples over, and that like sends you prone backwards, or you land and like hit the guy. But it's cooler if the table topples. That's funnier. <laughs> Everything falls over. You land prone. You've expended. 10, 10, you've expended too much movement to stand up. That's okay. Um, but you still have your full action. Am I within melee or would this be ranged now? Because I fell. You are now ranged. <laughs> okay, no problem. I still have that thing up, so I'll just throw a fireball. It's very chaotic. We're level three. I really like it. Yeah, you are now at range. 
17. Uh, a 17 to hit does hit, yeah. Oof. And two. Two fire damage. Two old fire damage. Whittling on down. Uh, I can okay. really see that in my head. Landing on the edge of the table, it flips, smacks down, throws fire. It's good. It scatters off, and boom, you watch as you, the fire hits the back of the table, topples so much noise, uh, and he turns his head towards you. Uh, now kind of looking back and forth from you into Crane. A little test for me, yeah? Uh, sounds like fun. Uh, and you watch as he wheels on both of you, shield up. As a okay. bonus action, Decrane, he is going to attempt to slam you with his shield. You watch he this kind of a feint and then charges and shoulder slams you with the shield. Uh, it's an attack roll, so it's going to be a, a 10 to hit, unfortunately. Nope. Uh, you manage to just like pivot and hold your ground pretty consistently. Um, but in the same move, he swings the flail over, trying to hit you with the flail. That is a 24 to hit, definitely hits. Just- you are not Tondo the Blue. You do not have... <laughs> you take six bludgeoning damage and two necrotic damage for eight total. Eight. Okay. Not great. Um, but... As he stands back up, he is going to um, pivot. Uh, I gotta like, position you all where the spaces you're actually supposed to be. He's going to push past be in between both of you and an advantage swing down on Augustus prone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a 20 to hit for sure. That'll do. Ooh, uh, 10 points of bludgeoning damage and two points of necrotic. Got it. Uh, and he ends his turn right there. That is Decrane. Your turn. My, my dude? Come on, Decrane. Okay. So I'm still within five feet, right? Yeah, he is now to your left. All right, so I'm not gonna not gonna waste time here. I'm just I would just pull out my long sword and uh-huh. I would uh, cut his head off. Okay, go ahead and make an attack. Let me always go for the extreme instead of the try. <laughs> okay, it's a nine, uh, and my long sword is plus five, so fourteen. 14 just misses, unfortunately, as um, you draw. (laughs) You can action surge if you want. It's free. Yes. So I miss, but I Mm -hmm. bring it back. And I go for it Action surge, baby. There you go. Go for the action surge. Go ahead and roll uh, your second uh, second attack here. 11. Okay. A 16 uh, is going to hit as he laughs off the first strike. Uh, and you watch as he's just just like not even trying like just watching you know just like so much further uh, and you then just suddenly swing back with the rapier go ahead and uh, make roll your damage uh yeah rapier 1d8 plus 3 uh a 1 very nice great 4 total I guess we're climbing up from 1 points to 2 points to 4 mm. points <laughs> he is still standing you, you strike out and uh, in this piercing strike, trying to go for the head. Uh, and he, he moves enough that you just kind of pierce a little bit of like through to like the trap in the back of his of his like neck. Uh, and it like, but he's uh, very thick in muscle and you don't get so deep that it's, uh, it's too detrimental. But it's still hit. Every bit counts. Every bit. That is your action, action surge. You have a bonus and movement if you wish to use it. Uh, well, I can't like I can't do a dagger with bonus, can I? Mm-mm. Okay, so because your other hand would also still have your pistol, and now your rapier in the. Okay, so I don't I don't really have a bonus move. Um, and Wish my your bite movement... was a bonus. That would have been sick. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll go to my buddy. Uh, okay. Nice. Forgot about him. Bonus. And I will do befudding spores. Okay, now, does it say, did I write it so that it's every creature within five feet, or? 
creatures of your choice. Creatures within the spore radius must make a DC 11 wisdom save. If he moves so that you're not in it, or Kev, you could pivot before this happens. You have movement left. Mm-hmm. You I'll, can pivot I'll move out of the radius, yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. He is minus a D4 to the save. Ooh. Nice. Good call. Good call. Okay. That's pretty handy so now. Fuddling spores is a wisdom save. Which I don't think is his uh, strong suit. That is fail. Minus three is a big fail. Great. Yeah, that's a six. <laughs> Did uh, not need that D4. <laughs> wait, is it that they succeed on? Could he use it again? Oh, wait, my turn's next. Never mind. Let's grab Cordis. Now, is it Cordis? Yep. Uh, he falls under the confusion spell. Uh, so it's uh, the spell assaults and twists his mind as spawning delusions and provoking uncontrolled actions. Um, the affected creature can't take reactions and must roll a d10 at the start of their turn to determine its behavior. So I, at the t- start of my turn, I will roll a d10. Excellent. Great work, Cordis. Pound him. Good job, Cordis. That he can't ends. take reactions. Could Cordis move out of the way? Sure. If you want. It's up to you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. He retreats. Cordis knows it works. He's like, <laughs> got this guy. I'm good. <laughs> oh, let's chill, my friend. Meek, Meek, what's up, dude? <laughs> oh, no. Meek, no. How's it going, guys? <laughs> he begins to slowly consume Meek's dead flesh. Yeah. That's how Meek would have wanted it. Gives them boost. That's gives how them they boost. work. That's how they work. Meek told Does me he gets healed a little bit. No, um, he's just having a snack. Cool. Uh, that ends uh, Decrane and Cordis. Andy, we come to you. All right, I will kind of like stick my head down and be like, "Okay, is everything going? Oh God, everything's not going okay. Uh, it's not good. What's this? Okay, case? I'll come down. Are you climbing or jumping? Oh fucking jump! Make an yeah. acrobatic check. Can one of us make this save? Okay. My acrobatics is bad, but I rolled a 17 on the dice. Love so it. So it can't be that bad. So that's an 18. Yeah. Uh, no prone and half damage to one point of damage for the drop. Um, one point. Okay. One point of damage, but no, uh, yeah, you don't fall prone. Just, you know, it's still a decent drop. Uh, and uh, yeah, you land, uh, look around the scene. Uh, the furniture has been tossed and this massive six foot six man is just bearing down on all these tiny creatures into crane. I'm going to just run up to him and try to smack him with my stick. Uh, okay. With the divine strike? Yep. You rush forward. Mm, I don't know what his AC is. It's only a 16. 16 hits? Oh mm. my god. AC 15 at this point. You guys have learned that 14 just misses. Okay. It's four points of uh, radiant damage. Moving on up. Uh, You clock him in the back of the head um, and you see an element of the mask crack beneath the radiance um, that is kind of like around the back of the head that holds it in place, which is more or less just a skull on top Mm -hmm. of his head. Um, and he just kind of wheels on you with wild eyes beneath the mask, feeling it crack. What do you pay for? Okay. Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm not going to have any bonus actions. Uh, and then my little dude is also going to try to punch him in the mask. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Jumps. It's only plus two to hit. He can't reach the mask because he's too short. Fine. He'll punch him in the tummy. Uh, he can hit him in the tummy, the knee. The hip. He doesn't hit. Okay. <laughs> he rolled a three. He tries. It does not, it does not yeah. work. He backs back up. <laughs> he indeed does not hit. That is the end of Andy's turn. Enid fires an arrow just as it scatters into the group around you all, nearly hitting someone, but unfortunately shatters and cracks across the stone. Wait, but it was that's with the 19? That's not a no. 19. Oh. She said, oh, nine, nine, but then it was a 14. Yeah. I saw it was a 14 plus five. What about I imagine her like trying to hang from the like lateral cool. 
She's let's doing in, some amazing let's, acrobatics. Manipulation. Let's send in her Hydra, though. Like, let's get the Hydra up in here. So oh, my little dude's back to fuck up, Kyle. Uh, oh, I see. I was going to say, there's going to be no room to do that. Yeah, he's going to back up again because the guy doesn't have reactions. Hydra can move in. So if you want to make some attacks for him. Can I ask Al? Let's see how quick she can respond. Al, roll. Just roll two d20s. Al, so cute. She, heart, she hearts every message. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie is on Mama Mama Bunny duty, if you're a listening audience. But she is mm-hmm. here with us through the magic of uh, digital communications. Good old technology. 16 and 18. Both. Hey, she can text while doing this. Is actually she, really impressive because I could never. <laughs> if she has the wherewithal, she can roll 4d4. What's this thing's name again? Uh, Virgil. V- Virgil. She hit one, three, two, four for a total of 10 points of damage. Virgil that is more damage, more damage than, than all of you. <laughs> any of us have done it's combined. I uh, you guys watch as this little creepy mushroom kind of wiggles and walks its way in as Esper retreats. This guy walks in and this like six, seven, eight headed kind of swaying mushroom just batters this guy's like crotch and just fucking pummels his nuts with these spotted hydra heads. Uh, And you see these little poisonous plumes begin to uh, eat away at any exposed skin for 10 points of damage. That'll end Enid's turn. Bring us to the top of the round. Augustus, you are prone watching all of this mayhem play out. Yeah. And you just took a pretty decent hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of forgot what class I'm playing, which has been <laughs> happening a lot this campaign. So I think I'm in a wild shape. Uh, I thought about doing my ray thing, but there's just too many people around and I don't want to set this whole tower on fire. So let's wild shape and let's choose the shape of falling on the ground uh, and looking up at this thing and just like lying like face down like on my belly. Um, I'm gonna like look at Ray again and reach my little paw out to her. And as she comes into me, my form kind of like changes and moves together and I turn into what Kyle called the Lindworm. And so it's just basically Mm. like this kind of weird serpent creature that's green and earthy toned. Um, I can post a picture of it in the chat. And then I'm going to attack this. Uh, Unfortunately, it's an action for you to Fuck. turn. That's such a bummer with this stuff. That is the disadvantage of the non-moon druid. But if it doesn't have reactions, maybe I'll start slithering away. Did you want to move? Yeah, I'm going to slither away. I have a move of 30. Um, so why don't I... You can go to pretty much anywhere. Get up on top of like a bookshelf or something cool. Do I have a climb speed? I don't. That would um, be hard. I'm going to just slither over back to the um, ladder. Uh, yeah. You know, like in that corner near the ladder? Yeah, just like one back there. If that makes it, they can just put me there. Whoop. There you are. And I got no bonuses as a little snake boy, a little serpent guy, serpent bunny. Oh, sorry. After Ali's turn, do we want to move her mic in it or... Was it going to stay there? Maybe he stays there to give advantage. Or if he pivots around the other side, would he give advantage to? I mean, he had to jump down and do this. So he's. Oh, no, he climbed in. He's a spider boy, right? He doesn't have any movement left. Gotcha. Have, okay. yeah. have, I guess he might have five feet, but I, yeah, I, don't, it's okay. I don't think so. Uh, it's fine. So Augustus changes, moves away. That is the end of Augustus's turn. Meek is dead. That brings us to. <laughs> you didn't have to say it like that. <laughs> He died that brings us to the bone breaker. He That's rolls a D10 for confusion. Don't call him that. He rolls a three on confusion, which that feels is like it's good. The creature doesn't move or take actions. Moving on. Watch. Uh, you watch as yeah, this befuddling confusion. This guy's as much as he like has uh, made a couple of comments and responses. Um, you watch at this point this like haze and daze kind of fall over him maybe as a result of the pummeling to his testicles uh where he just loses kind of coherence and his turn ends it comes to decrane's turn Allie just missed that she <laughs> just missed that. tell Allie what you said about what her little <clears throat> what her little guy did 
the spotted hydra with his multi attack, his multiple heads, his pummeling strike pummeled this man's testicles until he was so confused he lost his turn. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and now it's Decrane the Blue's turn? Uh, I'm going to go back to the rapier. If you move uh, one yeah, step, you can... you can get advantage because of me. Yeah, yeah, I'll move a step. You can make an attack with advantage. All right. And get him. So first roll is a two. Great. Good start. And second roll is a 17. Yes, guy. That's what you've been looking for. That will indeed hit. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. 1d8 plus 3. Four, seven, seven points. Um, yeah, in the in the round of the Hydra, this like round of confusion where he can't do anything, and then this attack, you do pierce through. You pierce through like going for a killing blow, and were he not so like massive with muscle, like this just enormous man would have dropped him, but he is on death's door as you withdraw your rapier, um, looking very hurt. I'm just going to say, I, I hope you're not too attached to your head. He just has, unfortunately, no response. Good. Decrane, that is your action, five feet of movement. You can do um, a bonus action if you have anything, or let um, uh, Cordis get yes. in there. I'll let him in, and we're going to go... When Cordis uh, finish him off. Headbutt. headbutt. On Cordis, it's a D twenty plus two, I think. All right, and the result is a fifteen. Oh my god! It hits. It hits. Roll forty four. Let Cordis get the final blow. Come on! And this kicks him in the nards again. Is ten. Holy. Ten is going to do it. Uh, as uh, with a uh, a massive wind up, run, and headbutt full as high as he can go, which just so happens to be his pelvic region. Cordis I'm just imagining the bone breaker. <laughs> I'm just imagining, you know, in, in the spirit of Pokemon, you know, like a dud tree or a diglet, you know, that headbutt move that they had. They just... Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this man finds his end at the top of this tower and drops into a heap. As the uh, this bone breaker falls, the rest of you are inside taking a breath. Uh, Enid, you pop your head down. The action seems to have uh, finished. If you wish to join, I will. I'll head down there now. Uh, you climb down into the room. Uh, it is in mass disarray. Um, the sounds you assume would have carried through to the next room, and there doesn't appear to be any sound coming from any other room which would be directly below, like it's a tower, and there's one uh, hatch directly below the stairs to lead below to another space. But it doesn't sound like anything is immediately rushing. Before the Myconids start eating this fucker, um, can we just see if there's anything useful in his little, like, apron? Yeah, or make an investigation check. Uh, on, on his him. apron? He was wearing a little apron? Was like a leather apron. apron. Is he baking? <laughs> it, was, it was like a... Like a torturer's apron, you know? Oh, okay. Like a Covered Dexter in... apron. Yeah. Yeah, oh, a Dexter gotcha. apron. Yeah. Um, investigation, right? Yeah, are you just uh, investigating him or the room or... I was going to kind of start with him, but there's not a lot there to check. So then I was going to try to do the room after, but it's up to you if you want two rolls. Or if someone else wants to do the room. Yeah, I would say it is two different rolls. Mm-hmm. Whether it's you or it's... Uh, come on. <coughs> Sorry. Need to be on. Keeps glitching out. Won't let me check my skills, but I think it's just my intelligence. Just do intelligence plus proficiency. Yeah. So I think it's only a 14. On him is his flail, which under your um, uh, magically enhanced eye is indeed magical. Uh, it does have some uh, magical properties, um, at least mildly. Uh, he carries a shield. Um, he carries a series of a number of tools of the torturer's trade, uh, all with heavy signs of use and wear. Um, and uh, in his 
uh, trouser pocket, you find a set of carved bone dice. Oh, do they look fancy enough? Just, never mind, we'll do that later. I'm taking the dice. Okay. He had a mace, too, that was doing heavy damage. That's the flail. Flail? I don't know if I can use a flail, but... You can't use metal. Kyle, is there any energy left in him that I could take? Unfortunately, he is uh, energyless at this point. For blood? <laughs> uh, it would be the, the same. Oh. Has to be living. Maybe we can next some guy. Money. Just bite the next or energy suck the next guy. You just licking your lips, looking at this guy's dead body. <laughs> Does anyone want to look at the rest of the room? I'm a snake. I'm a yeah, no, you can't do shit. You're you're a little snake. You can I... make the check as well if, uh, if if no one else wishes to to look around the room. I I have perception six. I have insight six too. Actually, I'm a very I'm a very Sherlock snake. Um, but I'm actually thinking you keep your own mental stats. Cool. They're just yours. Hmm. I also have tremor sense 10 feet. So could I poke my head down the rest of the ladder to just try and see or sense if there's anything beneath us? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll just ask for a perception check for it as you kind of begin to kind of look down below. Um, 21. Yeah. <clears throat> no signs of life. You don't feel any tremors uh, below, only what's in the room around you. In the room below, you can see the, um, crates and tables and shelves all been kind of shoved against a wall or lie splintered after like an obvious signs of like ransacking. Um, but on the far side of the room, opposite of where this would lead down, you can see uh, three bedrolls and packs of gear around a faint ember fire where there has been recent sign of camp and habitation, um, though there is no one in any of it currently. Um, it's the best you can see. I'll work my way back up. Um, does Allie still have her animal talking up? After a short rest of an hour, I think the speak with animals fades. I mean, it only lasts for an hour, but please confirm the length, but I'm pretty sure. It, uh, it says 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, definitely, okay. definitely, definitely faded. Yeah. <laughs> Can I crawl to this guy's blood and use my tail to dip my tail in the blood? And then Make I'm going to I'm going to write next to the body just like one line, one line, one line, and then point my tail at him and point my tail like up. And then point my tail at the ladder. Okay, so there's three of them, and three of them are gone. That's all. Uh, that's what we're working with here. And there was ten total. Right? Do I have that right? No. Oh, is that what you got from that? I thought he was just painting it. <laughs> I thought they said something about how many people attacked. Let's stare at Nettie. It, it wasn't ten. No, I thought it was ten. I'll check again. I boop your head, Nettie. Just give you. Aww. A <laughs> and I whisper, I go, by the way, this looks really cool. Oh my god, I can't read my own writing. So, what's it going to be? What are we doing? Are they like books? Like, could we try and investigate? My whole thing is why this tower? Um, mm -hmm. So, if a snake can read, I would. I'd be going through these books, trying to like see what they were doing up here, at least. I rolled that like sixteen general investigation check. If that helps in this at all. Okay. Um, with the 16 investigation from Andy and then um, everyone's kind of beginning to peruse um, the books you find um, are incredibly old uh, the bookshelves are, are heavily covered in cobwebs and dust and um, don't seem to have been recently disturbed by this recent occupation as you kind of begin to flip through them um Many are in languages you don't understand. Um, they are handwritten, old, and begin to kind of crumble and fall apart. Mm -hmm. They are that ancient. Um, it's a sign of the age of this tower. If you wish, you could, with great care, try to save some of them, if, uh, if that's something of, of interest to you, but... I Nobody can comprehend languages at some point. 
So there's a, there's uh, I'd say there's a dozen books that are salvageable that don't just instantly just like fall apart or are just too weathered um, of the maybe like 20, 30 random stacks of books. So if you wanted to, you could pick like one or two to like take hold of and maybe at another time. Mm-hmm. I think if there's a role here, but like I think just with with check? air, no, 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 it's um oh. more like to, to properly care. Like you can't decipher anything at this point. Like you, you could maybe try and decipher age, but that's about as best you could get right this second without the aid of comprehend languages. Um, it's more just like you carefully wrap them and tuck them away somewhere for safety. But with the 16 investigation of the rest of the room, uh, you find eight pounds of simple rations. Great. That are just kind of amassed in amongst the uh, kind of cooking area. Uh, and on the tables, the ones that have not been thrown over, there are three mortar and pestles. And each of these mortar and pestles bear a fine crystalline like powder residue inside. What does the residue like color? Fine. It's kind of this kind of white um white crystalline very fine nothing like mothy dusty or nothing like the not the same consistency and that spooky um stuff that was haunting ursa was like black and icky not like this yeah no it doesn't feel like any of uh, any of those elements um i can can be a nature check, anybody. If you want to try and see if you can suss out what it is. <sighs> Wizards of the Ghost, you know. <laughs> you know you know Scott's issue with this problem. Ten. Knowledge is based, so I'll do too. Ten. Mm, you did better than me. Crystalline-ish, like almost like salt, but harder, sharper. Hmm. Like diamonds? Could we ask the Mykonids if they recognize those? Um, it comes over to it and like puts a hand into it. Uh, Cordis. It is a natural substance, but not one of our making. Perhaps gemstone. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, is there anywhere in here like in theory, is there just like a little bit or is it enough that you could scrape it into like a little like equivalent of a test tube? No. Residue. Okay. Like you're they, just finding the, you know, what's left. And when you when you grind something in a mortar and pestle, you're just finding the faint yeah, yeah, yeah. elements remain behind. Does it look um, it's not it doesn't look magical at all. It doesn't have a ring of magic to it. Probably a component of some kind. OK. Um. Okay, that's it then. We got eight pounds of rations. That's going to be useful. I'll put that in my thing just because I have a bunch of rations already. Um, anything else anyone wants to do here before we move on? Can't read the books. Got all the stuff from the guy. Weird little pestle things. Sorry, remind me how many books that I could swipe. You're going to hold. You're going to take two with you of the potential like. Mm -hmm half dozen that are really in decent quality but like the amount of care that you need to take with each one to like make sure that it's not like crumble yeah. so slowly like you you managed to get to can i use actually oh no it takes a minute i'm gonna say can i use mending to just keep them from falling apart further what i would say is if you wanted to take the two minutes to do it with these two you could make sure that the like binding and cover holds mm -hmm. but if you were to try and mend any pages it'll undo writing yeah, no, no, that's not my thought. I'm literally just like trying to stop the binding so that things don't fall apart. Yeah, totally okay. fine. You can do that two minutes. So over like five, ten minutes of this like kind of mm -hmm. search around and things. Um, if any of you wishes to, without identifying it, you can add either as a note, um, uh, bone breaker flail. Sick. Also known as a raking flail in the inventory, if you wish to add Ooh. it, but you can't to look at what right? it does. Yeah, raking. but identify. I'll identify it later. We just need a martial user of strength in this party, and we would be set. Look, we also didn't have one for the last strength. Yes, yeah. 
We also did not have one for the last party until Ali joined us, like, yeah, multiples, yeah. like a year in. Everyone wants to be a dex fighter. Oh, it's fun. Magic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, are you guys moving it's down to the next level? Yeah, even I think while I was gonna say Leah, while Andy is doing that, um, could I bump Nettie and start to like work my way down there to see if we could like explore down that next level? Sure. Andy, you going or uh, Enid, you going? Yep. Yeah. Um, neither of you have dark vision unless your new form does. I might now. I don't just tremor sense yeah so you don't get any signs that there's other creatures so like safety wise you think you should be fine from creatures but there's other things that could pop in the dark True. um so uh there's no light in this next room um so either um you can produce a, a torch like you have torches from adventuring packs if you want um or if you have other signs of light unfortunately ray would be your normal go-to but ray is currently inside of you <laughs> Um, You're currently fused. You can ask Esper to join you, who has a natural light as well. Yeah. Bring the fucking mushroom. Esper will join the initial kind of push down here while Andy finishes up top before everyone begins to come down. But the, with the three of you down there, um, uh, Esper, like, kind of like, just as like a faint glow. And then when there's no other sign, just kind of illuminates the room with bright light. Uh, so you can all see totally fine. Um, to Crane, do you want to join us? Do you want to join the party? Or do you want to hang with Andy? You're going to join, sweet. To Crane comes down. Um, so yeah, you see this room is um, on the far side. It has been a clear sign of like a camp set. Uh, recent, uh, Recently slept in. Um, there are packs of gear mm -hmm. kind of stashed over there, as well as the various kind of crates and things around the room. But the packs of gear would be kind of most immediately of interest. Um, if anyone wants to make it, it would be investigation checks to check those. I'll definitely do that. I'll go up to one, even as a snake. Um, with the three of you there, you can make this check with advantage if Enid or Decrane wants to assist. Is it investigation, sure. you said? It's investigation, yeah. Four. Who's got the best? Mine's zero. What's yours now? Mine's zero. plus one. It's on you. You okay. roll with advantage. It's probably That's better with someone with fingers and thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just okay. poking stuff with my face. Five, not great. And six, not great. Mm. <laughs> oh, God, we're the best party. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Was that adding be... it already? Yeah. Sick. Six. six eight. Uh, I'll make a dexterity save for me. Oh, thank God. 22. Okay. Great. <clears throat> um, as you guys are, like, beginning to kind of, like, sift through... Um, something about like the energy and just like you're getting like fevers trying to like find loot it's becoming a bit of a fun game and the snake you're like winding your way this lindworm winding its way in around things um kind of tossing things out of the way um there are kind of random bits of traveling gear lanterns mess kits you know um however each bag is also adorned with random cruel trophies fingers ears tongues eye stalks um uh, various tools of torturers that uh, as you're kind of running your hands through, you nearly get nicked and cut by various torturing implements. Um, and you think, oof, that was a close one. And as you reach your hand in deep to grab a something, you're just kind of just plunging your hand into a random bag, hoping to pull out treasure and something good. Uh, Enid, you grab something a little too hard in your haste and your energy, uh, and it's a, a vial of like a glass vial, and it shatters. Um, and you're able to pull your hand out quick enough before uh, anything, but you instantly all begin to smell this acrid ascent as uh, you watch the bag begin to acidically kind of burn away. Well, that's not good. Uh, I hope I don't get tetanus. Can I try and move it with my tail quickly away from the other bags? Just... <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> And then I just stare at Nettie with my snake face. And just yeah. this sizzling of acid as it's kind of pockmarking the stone in the space that it has worked its way through. I have like bits of fur missing now and I'm just like- <laughs> Just a little. Be honest, did this look really bad? <laughs> Thank and then I'll oh. give the crane a look. He'll turn my face to the crane. We'll just... <laughs> Both little side eyes. 
<laughs> um, How hurt is everybody? We kind of forgot to go over this. I had 8 HP before becoming a, a Lindworm, which has 10 HP. I'm hurt. How hurt, Kev? Uh, I can half. heal people. You're at half? Not in your current form, you can't. Not in my current form. Shoot, okay, I'm trying to figure out if... I can... Where's my features and traits? I think I bailed on my, like... Oh, no, I'm out of seconds, so anyways. Mm, I can only use this once. Maybe save it. Yeah, because you're the... No, Ally can heal, too. I think I might save it for, like, literally someone about to die, because I can only do it one time. Kev, we do have... Don't we have potions? Okay. Each of us has one potion. You each have one potion of healing. You do have the staff of healing. Yep. We got a that lot of charges left. Scott can't do anything about it right now. Currently. I could drop this. It's just so fun right now. No, you may as well keep it. Okay, so if, if yeah, we have, each have potions. That's fine. Yeah, Kev, I'm going to do this. So it's 2d4. It's an action, so I'd rather not use my action combat to do it, <laughs> to be good. honest. So one second, let me give you... What is that? Oh, that's a four. And a one. So you get five hit points back. I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah, where a lot of other other magic seems to come from Astrolabe. This one's just like purely hands and the, all the close tattoos and freckles and everything start glowing. There's a there's a particular divine radiant energy that comes off of this cast that is more reminiscent of Ray and Augustus than it is of anything else that Andy normally pulls off. Hmm. She's just a half elf. Now, um, as uh, this investigation uh, is currently underway, Andy, you come down to see a sizzling pile of acid and a pretty, like, just torn apart mess of a ransacking room. Yeah, we got excited, didn't we? <laughs> just trying not to meet her gaze, just like looking okay. around the room. Okay, maybe next time we take our time and, like, see if we can, like, get anything out of this thing. It's okay. Um, is there another down hatch of the stairs again? There is. Okay. Um, hey, uh, Snake Gussie, you want to try to, like, go over there and see if you can feel anything in the next room, hear anything? Just start moving that way. Very Nagini, but like a fun Nagini, not like a scary Nagini. Like a cute one. <laughs> like a cute, cutie one. Just a little cutie guy. Make a perception check for me. And Andy, um, with your passive investigation, um, in some of the um, elements of the ransacking that were missed. <clears throat> you do see um, there's something sticking out of one of the bed rolls that has been kind of just tossed and it catches your eye, a little glint um, that just catches your eye with your passive. I'll try to like unroll the bed roll with like my staff, <laughs> like push it across the floor. I'm scared of touching shiny things now. Uh, as you, you shift this bed roll, you can see that a... Um, it was kind of what was it was tucked in the lining of the bedroll, um, but in the mayhem has kind of been split open. Um, there is a pouch that has been slightly knocked open a little bit, and you can see the glint is inside. But with this pouch, um, and kind of it's like attached around a loop, it's tied to a journal, which Ooh. is a leather bound pocket-sized journal bound by cord, um, and this cord is uh, attached to this small pouch. Um, uh, what was the investigation, or the uh, perception, sorry, as we go forward? From uh, Augustus. Sorry. I wanted to ask, do you want me to roll with disadvantage, because I only have tremor sense, not dark vision? No, nope, this is fine. Straight rolls fine. Eight. Um, you get no sense of creatures, and even despite your lack of dark vision down into this next space, there's no signs of anything in this room. It's like a just a empty 20 by 20 foot room. I'll crawl back up. Do I see Andy pocket that book? I'm not pocketing it. I flat out have it in my hand. I have to consult my actual real notes because I just like thought of something interesting. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. This. Uh, Kyle, I might use... Um... Oh, shoot. It's a whole spell slot. Should I wait? use a detect magic? It only lasts for 10 minutes. <laughs> I could get it for free from the Divining Rod. Why don't you do that? 
Yeah, but I can, I can, there's like three spells I can choose that I can only get for free, but I can just use the spell slot to cast them. So, yeah, okay, I'm going to use my free detect magic today to just have it to make, to see if one, there's anything we're missing in this room, mm -hmm. and two, like if there's something I should be sketched out about, about either the journal or the pouch. Uh, immediately, there is a magical essence from the bag that Enid had uh, broken and burned a little there's some there's still um magic elements that are within the remnants of the bag um someone very carefully go check that one again very carefully shake, okay shake I... my head now <laughs> uh and the journal the cord of the journal is magically enchanted similar to an alarm okay mm -hmm. Now, you gather it's not an alarm in the same spell, but it has the same functionality. Um, make an Arcana check for me. Mm. That's going to be good. Dirty 20. Okay. Um, with the aid of Detect Magic, you can see that there is like a... Um, it is magically enchanted, um, but it can be almost like uh, reverse. It can be like lock picked magically. You can find the sequence mm -hmm. within which to untie it that will um, disenchant it for the time being. Um, you can like see through the runic elements to to see that there is a puzzle to sort it out. Um, in matter of fact, it, it would be a straight intelligence check to sort. Okay. It. Okay. Um, is there anything magical about the pouch or anything inside it? There's nothing magical about it, but there is a diamond inside, which seems pretty. Um, uh, it would require a check to see how much it's worth. This is the way the DM's telling you you might need this later. <laughs> <laughs> just rewards can I I'll drop my snake form mm. I'm like I guess this returns oh, that was mm -hmm. that was kind of fun it was cool no I could do this one too um that I was thinking when I was a snake that book what we saw up the words we couldn't read do you remember the map we found in the cave of the troll Remember you, Nettie, and Andy said there was like creepy, like a guy was tortured and like on the wall or whatever. Th hmm. Does the cartographer have any writing that's similar to this? I'm just thinking these guys are weird and torture people. It's, it's the same writing? Hmm. We can try. I can pull it out. It's a very like fucked up map of that Something general area. Like right? The map is in common um okay. there it's a normal map it was just like partially sundered um, oh right because it was from like a random cartographer who was going through the area mm. it was the cartographer's map um what i would say is while there are links in the brutality um it's less of a link of like a torture brutality in the from the troll that seemed more like a um, this is a trophy and trolls just visceral tearing and pulling apart less of a like long, slow, torturous, uh, Death endeavor torture thing. Yeah. Like there were, there was no iconography in the trolls, um, lair. Okay, cool. But it obviously a, a nice connection there. Um, that just kind of happened to happen while I'm in a bunny boy. I'm just gonna heal myself twice with the staff. Mm -hmm. And Kev, I'm gonna hit you up too. Did anyone else get hit? Al, you didn't get hit while you were gone. I took one point of damage. That's it. Um, can someone <clears throat> who's Dexy try to like look through that bag that is now half acid so they don't get burned? I'm not Dexy, so I don't trust myself to like try not to touch things. I don't have mage hand. You don't just use a stick to like move just it around. Dump it out. Be gentle. Last something broke last time. Mm -hmm. We don't want to break more shit. Kev, let me throw you a D eight, 
plus four. Oh, it's eight plus four, so 12 HP back to you. Ooh, Let me know if you need another one. No, that's we, perfect. Okay, cool. We've used five charges of the staff today. Okay. <clears throat> in the meantime, um, Andy, do you flip into this journal or do you try and do this in, uh, investigation check to uh, unlock it? And does anyone try to check the acid bag? I'll, uh, if I have a stick, I will try and ch check the acid bag. You can bag. use my old staff, not the staff okay. of healing. Go ahead and make um, just a straight dexterity roll. It's relatively oh, easy, yeah. DC. 13. And, and it would be a straight, yeah, easy enough. You're able to kind of just poke through. Uh, you can hear the tinkling of glass. Um, and uh, indeed, there are two more vials of acid inside this bag that you're able to retrieve. Nice job. Ooh. They can be searched in D&D Beyond as vials of acid. If you were to throw those. acid. Fine. Straight intelligence check. Straight intelligence. 20 total. 17 on the dice yeah. plus three. Easily knocks it out of the park. Um, able to kind of like, it, it's difficult. To, you don't even realize how it, you're doing it, but you see the pattern before your hands do. You like figure it out in that kind of like foresight, like seeing it play out and watching watching it play out and saying, nope, that doesn't go that way. And then this way, and then it does. And you watch it all play out before you actually do a single move. And Has anyone seen perfectly. next? Yeah. You get to see six seconds. The, of the classic future. next. Well, now, is that a Chris Evans one or the Nick Cage one? That's a Nick that Cage. That is the Nick Cage one. Mm, that's a Nick Cage masterpiece. Where really he just watches himself fail 10 seconds to the future or whatever the hell it is. Just so he can bang Jessica Biel. And he had beautiful long hair. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. That's great. The I missed the long hair like Nick Cage days. The whole time. God, that yeah. movie's bad. Um, okay. Um, I'll open it up. Is it in common? Uh, it is. You open through and you flip through. Uh, for, it's it's a it's a journal, so you see multiple things as you flip through. A smattering of charcoal drawings of um, particularly awful scenes. Several anatomical diagrams of various creature physiology with some notations <clears throat> in common. But interspersed within these diagrams are rambling journal entries of this uh, person's twisted devotion and obsession with the god Nazul. Uh, however, notably, the, bar the book is marked to a place near the middle where you open to an entry. And on the left page, um, there is a journal entry. And on the right, you see a hand-drawn map. The journal entry on the left reads, Our Shikari source in Katnakura came through as agreed, as he should for the coin we've paid him. Another wretched watchtower of the Star Crest, though he claims this one to be true. Our search for the Grim Lord will come to an end in this grotto. When he is returned, we will find Telford and flay him for daring to charge our pursuit. Can you... um? The search for the, can you spell that, please? Can you? Um, I'm just going to drop all of this. Thank you. Yeah, don't even have <laughs> Thank to ask. Thank you. Just let me go through this part first. <laughs> so funny. Uh, a second Star entry Christ. That's below that uh, notes another day. They're, they're dated. Uh, the anticipation is ecstasy, and for every step we draw closer, I can feel the burning gaze of the warden upon us, his notched whip driving us onward. We are on the right path. And a final entry, uh, dated only a few days ago. We arrive and the presence is unmistakable. The Grim Lord lies in wait, and no watcher nor fungus can stop the inevitable. Their burning screams are a triumphant procession. I pray to Nazul that Morgren hears their cries. You see, the map itself uh, is a... Uh, fairly detailed route to sail from the city of Katnakur along the coasts and through island chains to reach this very grotto, which is marked as a hidden abyss, unseen until it is too late. Damn it, I have a metagame problem mm -hmm. from our other oh, campaign. Shit, you got insight because <laughs> you're other character? Shit. Or lock that down. Oh, mm -hmm. I just saw that. Andy has no idea what any of Andy this Andy doesn't know what any of that means. Okay. Um... 
the grim lord jesus that sounds absolutely fucking terrifying when he is returned we will find telford and flay him for daring to charge our pursuit the grim Richard lord lies in wait of the star crest super cool name first off yeah amazing okay well it sounds like to me, they're trying to, like, awaken something terribly creepy, so that sucks. Um, <laughs> and it sounds like they're close to it. The Grimlord lies yeah. in wait. No watching or fungus can stop us. They're burning screams. Blah, blah, blah. I pray to Nazgul that yeah. Morgrind hears their cries. Yeah, Morgrind is a new name. Nazul is not. Nazul is Morgrind... not. Yeah. Does Morgrind ring any bells, history or religion wise? Make a history check. Hmm, only mid. But my history, I think, is yeah, good. Ecstasy for every step we're Oh, yes, I have expertise in it. Never mind. So that's a... Oh, I can't do math today. 19. Yeah, 19. <clears throat> uh, Morgrind, also known as the Grim Lord, okay. is an ancient... Um, uh, follower and like cult leader and ultimately uh, one of the one of the 13 liches of um, a bygone age uh, known as the Dark Ages who ruled with uh, cruelty and an iron fist um, and who were subsequently stopped by the Age of Heroes, the Age of Return um, and uh their rule was challenged only by other like tyrants and warlords in the Dark Ages and by um, fierce draconic um, presences and giant <clears throat> um, giant led tribes uh, armies. Yeah, tribes, kingdoms like uh, armies is, is, is a better way to put it. Um, the Dark Ages is literally a dark time of, of war and uh, pain uh, that is marred by many of these very evil entities trying to rule various parts of the world through cruelty with a lack of magic and a lack of divinity to come to their aid, to come to the aid of the people. Okay, the um, the page that had the map on the other side, are there any like names on the map or like place names or anything like that? Nothing that recognizable? Nothing, it's certainly not recognizable. It's all under underworld uh, okay. terrain and you recognize Kat Nakur as the city yeah that's kind of the only on the procession too but what about okay. Shikari have we heard that before I think uh, that's a person you have heard of the Shikari um coming back to um our time with our troll friend the Shikari um elements the symbols of the Shikari were on the cartographer. The cartographer bore signs of the Shikari. The Shikari are bounty hunters um, and often not um, not so caring about whether the bounty on you is legit and whether you're the person in the bounty as long as they get paid. They can be, they're feared on the outskirts of many societies as a uh, roving bandit-like gangs um, dealing in trading of people and um, all kinds of illicit material and things. I feel less bad about the yeah, dead guy that rolls on me. Yeah, yeah. Now we, now we think about I'll explain it. everything that I read. Well, if this is the watchtower that they're talking about, I think uh, we should hey. go one... When I looked, um, when you guys were still up here, there's nothing that I could see at first in the floor of this next room. But I, do you guys want to check it out with me just to make sure we're not missing anything? I mean, I can take a look, and if it's an illusion or something, I'm, I can still see magic right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's go. For a little bit longer, I can see magic, but we should probably use it if we can. Can you see if that? everyone's healthier now? This, that's no magic, it's just you kind of moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your form looked real weird when you were a snake, though, I'll tell you that. Thank you. 
I've been working. Yeah, it's, it was very cool. Um, you like getting all sorts of new things today. I had a really good prep talk with Isaac about like trusting yourself. You're the little guy. Like you can do cool things. You just gotta believe in yourself. So, just trying to, you know, if you guys believe in me, I can believe in myself too, right? Yeah, I mean, like you definitely. They've talked about the last few times. Yeah. I'm really trying to impress Decrane too. He kind of just want to. He's like a really tough nut to crack. Yeah. Um, he's what? also like, he he's just... a really straight face. Like it's really hard to read him. Oh, he was just staring at the bloody body of that guy upstairs. I was like, is his is stomach upset again? Like, what's going to happen? No, that's just like a thing he does. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like a stoic, like, a really oh, cool death here comes, doesn't here bother me. Yeah, so magics. And thank you for telling me about that. <clears throat> hey, anyway. anyway. The green, we're just going to check out the bottom of the thing if you want to come with us. I'll come. Not that I need your... <laughs> As you all begin to make your way down to the next room with the aid of some light and um, <clears throat> detect magic doesn't ping anything of note. Um, there is nothing in this room, um, the exception of uh, at the opposite side of the room, a descending staircase um, and a proper staircase, not a hatch with a ladder, steps of stone that lead down and below. However, uh, again, Andy, your passive investigation notes as you make your way towards and through this room, there are a number of bricks in the walls that have been shifted from where they should be in the pattern of the wall. Um, you piece it together to reveal likely that the staircase was revealed via the bricks. Cool. Um, but you move past as uh, has already been kind of the path has been forged before you. Um, who is the best passive perception who should probably go first? Actually, if it's, you know, it's probably Decrane because he can also see in the dark and you two can't, right? Uh, mine's 16, but I can't see in the dark. 15. Okay. Mine's also 16. So Decrane leads? I think so, yeah. Because he has not? dark vision. It begins in the central... My kind of yeah, single mushroom. file staircase so mushroom it does begin um, and if you're trying to keep in the dark then you want uh, Esper in the back Yeah, he does have a general light he can dim it pretty low but it does have a little bit of a glow listen never let anyone dim your light but in this instance just a <laughs> in little bit just dim it please <laughs> just do it um, to crane leading then uh, down this staircase uh, that uh, about five feet down breaks off to the left and right into this room. Um, on either side of this breakaway staircase of this 20, 25 foot square room, same as every uh, floor has been of this tower, are two large um, statues, tall, ornate, of a humanoid form. The hands are sat across on top of a tower shield before them. Um, relatively featureless, but humanoid. Um, on the wall across from the steps as you're beginning to come down, you see an iron banded double door that is currently shut. And above it, even at a distance, um, Enid and Augustus, you wouldn't quite be able to make this out without the aid of dark vision. But Andy, when you make your way down into Crane first, there's an etching above the door. You can't quite make out at this distance. Creep a little closer. All right. I'll, I'll move a bit closer. I mean, we should check for traps if anyone's good at that. Just look yeah. at the floor and make sure there's no, like... Oh. Maybe I'll do that first. I'll investigate for traps. No. Investigation check, please. All right. Ukraine. Plus zero should be pretty useful. <laughs> Best party ever. 13. That's actually pretty good. Uh, you can cross the room um, and see that there's nothing immediately on the floor, walls, uh, and... Uh, the two statues of note just kind of stand there as statues. They don't immediately kind of jump out at you as anything. Um, and it's uh, until you get all the way across to about five, ten feet before the door where you spy something of note. There is a silver wire across the base of the door that you've seen Andy use to be an alarm. Um, when crossed, whoever the caster is, is notified that someone has crossed it either. Um, as a bell in their head or as a, you know, there are various ways, but the 
way forward has been um, has been triggered. I will also say. Wait, sorry, just to clarify, the way. Did we just trigger the alarm? Is that what we noticed? Sorry, no. It's uh, it's. I shouldn't have said triggered. Um, it, it has been. Set. The way forward is trapped. It's trapped. The way forward is trapped. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I was like, oh fuck, it's about to go down. <laughs> no, sorry, that's my mistake. <laughs> I stopped ten feet shy of it. <laughs> Scott, you don't happen to have dispel magic, do you? That's a third level spell. No one has that. Oh, damn. Um, it's a third level spell. I don't have it. <laughs> You have is to learn the level of spells. Everything you I think is like, too high or too I low. played a, a smashy double sword person for six years. Oh, I didn't have a single spell. That's not true. You have are, to spell magic. Are those spells in a sword? Is no. is the wire? Do, would we know? Maybe I maybe Augie wouldn't know, but maybe Andy knows. Is it like a vertical plane that the alarm is, or is it like if you I can't like over this? It's not you like you can't that. sneak over it. It's okay. like That's imagine the purpose it like of it. It's yeah, like, gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. The other thing, Decrane, you note though, as you're making your way across this room, um, you notice the recent signs of battle that have taken place in the last few days within this room. There are dried blood stains, scorch marks, fragments of chipped stone bone and this uh, ever present kind of scent of ozone that hangs in the air that you're particularly keen to um, of of that scent of battle, the energy of battle. And um, I would say actually there's also a, a, an odd energy signature in the room that you're just kind of, you just pick up the scent of but can't quite fully place with that role. So I'm going to warn everyone that there's an alarm here. Someone's waiting for a notification that we're, that we're, we've arrived. Ah, uh, okay. Does it so smell unless we like... find another entrance, there's not really a way around that one. Does it smell like uh, the star wheel at all? Gunpowder? No. Okay. More uh, acrid, more chemical. Okay. We might, if we have to keep going, we're going to have to trip this. We've already made enough of a bank. Let's let's keep going. If That's we fair. explode, we explode. If we the question explode, is, we do explode? we like exploding? I'd rather not. Um, here's the thing that I'm not sure if if we're gonna trip an alarm anyway. God, this is this is gonna sound really risky. Um, if we're gonna trip the alarm anyway. Would it not be better to like not give them a significant amount of time to get ready? Like if we rush it, they're still a little bit on the back foot now, mind you. We also have no idea what it is we're seeing when we go in there. I hundred percent agree. The I element. Have I, I have another idea before something crazy. Yeah, please. <laughs> Do you know, Andy, if if Ray was able to transport us, like how she can, you know, kind of pop us? back yeah. on the other side with that ah, no I shouldn't teleportation wouldn't really be a problem it's literally crossing that let me read the spell it's literally <laughs> crossing the space but I'm pretty I, sure it would be fine because I could have Ray just ferry us in our little fiery sunny bursts back and forth if that's true touches or enters the warded area so that I think so it depends on how enters is we might not know Oh, no longer than the 20 foot cube. As long can you get past? I don't think it's that far. Let me check. Fire teleport 15 feet. Uh, well, it's 20 feet, 20 feet in both directions, Kyle, or is it 20 feet across? I can never remember with a cube. It's be 20 foot on a side. 20 foot per side. Okay. Uh, okay. What about Misty Step? I'm out. I'm, I'm out. just talking out of game now. Allie, do you have a Misty Step? I do, yeah. That's a single person, right? Yeah, just one. Yeah. Send Allie in alone. Three, no, three of us leave. Nice what happens. The only case that might work is to like go and like peek and then like come back, but we don't know how far that is. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw a couple wrenches in, <clears throat> yeah, just because it's fun. Uh, you need line of sight for everything uh, uh, that you're talking about, uh... and it's a closed door. Um... Oh, it's across right the door. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha across a closed door. For some reason, I thought it was an open door. No, the door is closed currently, and the alarm... Is it locked? You don't know. 
you'd have to cross the barrier to get to the door. Okay, now I'm feeling the Andy plan that the crane really liked. <laughs> we just go forward. I have one other question before we dive forward. Um, the wrench. Is there any light in the in the room that would um, boost all of you to be able to see appropriately? I can cast light on my staff now that we know there's nobody physically in this can, room. You have uh, Esper as well. That's right. Was there and now if we do that, can we see the markings above the door? Yes. Yeah, don't dim Esper's light. With a little bit of light that comes in the room with Esper, just naturally, he can't quite fully dim it, but uh, a little bit of light does now illuminate, knowing that you have a closed door, nobody immediately here. <clears throat> Couple things of note uh, begin to pique interest. Uh, to the per passive perceptions uh, of Decrane and the Herringons, um, with the addition of light, there is a glimmer of residue on the east wall. Um, in this kind of five foot space, just like a splatter a residue that glimmers it immediately catches your eye because it reflects the light. <clears throat> and uh, the etching above the door does, do any of you speak celestial? Oh, you speak, you, do. you speak celestial. So oh, weird. <laughs> Uh, is it druidic or sylvan or like bohemian english uh no oh, okay no Val valley girl does it valley girl <laughs> yeah. unfortunately none of you can read this um impressively flourishing script uh except andy you do see for what it says a warning written in celestial what lies dead can never truly die while vile will beats within a good heart. When good hearts drum their final beat, the skies will release the flood of ages and all below be lost to the righteous waters of hope and renewal. That sounds absolutely terrifying to someone who's always looking for, thank you, Kyle, always <laughs> looking for extra meaning in vision-y shit. Do you share that to everyone? Do you yeah. I think I would read it aloud quietly to myself and forget that anyone else is in the room when I'm saying it, as opposed to like, I'm going to share with everybody, but everyone will hear it. Um, second question, do the room, does the warning or the anything else in this room, detect magic still up? Ooh, detect magic is still up. Okay. Uh, alarm, obviously, is right there. Mm -hmm. Alarm, Alarming. Um, <laughs> the two statues have a magical presence in them. However, um, you can see the aura of conjuration, um, but it is suppressed or um, or, 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 or faint. Um, it doesn't seem to be at full presence. Oh, they fought the magic statues already and they went through and now the magic statues are out of energy. The, uh, you now under the light of the of detect magic also get a uh remnant on this glimmer of residue mm -hmm. that everyone now is kind of what's up with that definitely magical <clears throat> what school ish it's not probably not a spell but like um as you get closer go ahead and just make an arcana check for me that uh Actually, it's still an 11. Uh, okay. So with the detect magic, kind of adjusting the DC a little bit, the substance is magical adjacent, but it's what is around the substance that is clear magic that is pinging from your detect magic. Um, unfortunately, an 11 is not enough to identify it directly, However, you can see there is an arcane signature and runic echoes present upon the stone in the vague shape of a humanoid. With an 11, you can't get more information than that. However, I will allow anyone to make an arcana or nature check on the residue. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of person shaped, which is either like this was a person and it's no longer a person, or it could become a person, which is also not great. 
How's uh four nature? It's pretty good. Is that bad for a druid wizards of the coast? Should it be higher? <laughs> Maybe you should have taken proficiency in it. What about my ranger sister? I'm sure she's good at this stuff. Oh, minus one uh, for nature uh, and then plus one. So no. <laughs> did you roll that one or what did you roll? Probably uh, minus one. Yeah. Great. That's it. That's it. We're not good at this. Can I make a nature no. check since this is a separate check? Yeah. Okay. Like, because I already made an arcana check, so I'm assuming I can't make it. It's a different check. thing, though. You were making an arcana check oh. against the arcane, like, uh, barrier elements. Now it's against the actual residue. Then I will make an arcana check. Crane, do you have arcana? Because you're. Who knows what you are? Uh, zero. Okay. 19. Wait, okay. We're back. We're back, baby. <laughs> uh, combining the arcane signature of like whatever this element is that you can't quite identify um but coupled with what is ectoplasmic remains Ooh. um combines a weird circumstance in which you imagine a powerful banishment took place here um however what is a little odd is that something was banished um, and has been trying to come back across the veil. The residue is from it trying to push its way through the warding that is holding it away from this place. Uh, thus far has been unsuccessful. And you can see the residue is like it pushing and forcing elements of itself back. And it's like draining into this world from across the veil. My guys, I... so there was something probably that they were trying to fight <laughs> that was protecting this place and it's trying to come back. Hopefully, it's a good thing that's trying to come back. Could just be a thing that is like protect this space no matter what. If we reread that warning, what lies dead can never truly die while vile will beats within a good heart. When good hearts drum their final beat, the skies will release the flood of ages and all below will be lost to the righteous waters of hope and renewal. We just learned about a dark age that's had a real, real shit and bad everywhere. There was like no magic and hope at all. Uh, the mushroom people have a famous story of when everything flooded. And that's like when their history began. That was probably the righteous waters of hope and renewal. Maybe that's when like some like plane that like this is Scott speaking. <laughs> this is not Augustus uh, hypothesizing this so intensely, but maybe that was like a shattering of like allowing magic and divine stuff back, which caused the whole like fuck load of water. So you're saying the magic caused the flood? What? I was just looking at the goo. <laughs> Ain't it? It's so sticky looking. It's like. Why don't you try eating it? What you are like? not Hondo fish the guy. <laughs> a dumb fish man? <laughs> Who ate an eye stock of a not beholder? Actually, no, sorry. That was Gord ate the eye stock of a not beholder Dang. within our first five games. Yeah. Follow campaign one if you want that. Um, do we try and get this thing back? Does anyone have like anything they could try and do that? Like, a, I don't have any second level spells left. I was like, ooh, maybe lesser restoration could help that. I don't have anything like that. Kyle, the is is the red on the you described it on the uh, on the wall, right? The red, the sorry, the ectoplasmus plasm like oh. stuff was on was that yeah. on the wall or was that on the floor? <clears throat> so the uh, there is a like kind of a splattering of it on the wall, but there is also kind of a pooling on the floor where it seems like it's pushing through and then falls to the floor. Yeah, so I wonder like if we tried to attack that the redness, maybe like we could help cause a tear for it to come through okay well i mean i have divine oh you do mm -hmm. um i'm pretty <laughs> sure one second uh not divine um radiant damage that'd be tight let me tight. right i'm pretty sure that's what my let me double check i think that's what my cantrip is the staff one i think the can't yeah so is is radiant it looks like a little star with a little like moon light. thing it doesn't say <laughs> Oh, yeah, and okay, if you hit it, it does say radiant damage. Okay, cool. It is radiant damage. 
So if we want to maybe fight a ghost, <laughs> we could try to get this thing back. Um, maybe it has what if the ghost's on our side? What if the ghost? Maybe the friend? ghost could be on our side. I mean, it's a, the, obviously it was supposed to protect this place, but and it fucked them up. Whatever it was. Okay, who wants to free the ghost? I say trip the alarm, free the ghost. I In that order, I think we maybe do the other order. I think if we were in point of fact, I think if our magic uh, crossed the line, maybe it would set the alarm up. It's not, is it not? I thought it was on the side wall. Yeah, That's it's on the directed. east wall. The doors would be to the south. Yeah, so okay, it's, they're not beside each other. Then before we trip the alarm, bring that ghost back. Oh, it's okay. Move uh. that bus. It's early 90s, 2000s throwback reference. Yeah. Yep. Last wrench I'm going to throw real quick. Time Andy is our out. wizard. Yeah. One last arcana check for me. I've been rolling well on the. Actually, no, I did roll like a four on one of them. Uh, it feels like a, a cursed roll you just put on yourself. Very middle. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a 16. Yes. 16? Yeah. The thought process you're having about like trying to attack and break the warding of whatever this is um, would be akin to alerting via the alarm. Imagine something of your magic being attacked. Whatever placed it will be aware that it's being attacked. That's true, that's true, that's true. That's true. That's true. Look, maybe they'll come up here and then uh, we can not be attacking all of them at once and maybe only one of them comes up here actually that could work because maybe they just think this thing is broken through not necessarily that we did it Potentially. and maybe they'll be like oh someone has to go up there to go take care of the ghost again and then only like one of them will come up and we can we can fight one guy we did it already yeah you almost killed me we barely hit him it took yeah. eight of us to dig him down but we got like little mushroom guys and like you know, we're more prepared this time, maybe. We can just be ready, and if they come through the door, everyone like, and maybe we'll have a ghost on our side, or maybe the ghost will attack everyone, and then it's one more target that's not us. Listen, I was a snake 20 minutes ago. I say we just roll with the punches and see what happens. All right, I'm not my other character. I don't think everything through to the death. Um, Yeah, let's try to fucking hit this shit, and if someone comes up, so be it. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Don't be embarrassing. It wasn't embarrassing. Excellent. I'm like, do I summon Ray or do I keep this for a wild shape? I'm so panicked. Uh, it is plus five. So this is a 21. Okay. Uh, roll damage for me. Okay. Just a D6. That's a five. You strike with your diviner strike cantrip of your staff. Everyone stands back and you reef back and slam your staff into the heart of this runic warding circle. You find purchase before hitting the stone. There is a barrier here to strike. Um, unfortunately, it's not enough to break it. As in, it needs more damage to do anything or as like, I've only chipped away at it? It seems like you're only chipping away at it you can do this path. It will take longer. There are other ways and faster ways. You need more damage. Mm -hmm. There's like a damage threshold element here that your cantrip is not going to pass over. Do I have a feeling that it does need to be magic damage though? Certainly needs to be magic damage. It doesn't okay. need to be radiant. I'll give you okay. that. Like it doesn't have a school tied to it, but it needs to be magically charged in some capacity. But it needs a significant, you know, it's a it's a it's a hefty barrier you're, you're trying to break through, and immediately you get a all of you as as like you crack into it, and there's this kind of like of like aura sensation um, three, four, five seconds later like a darkness falls over the room oh boy. and 
fades. Your presence has been noted. Great. Uh, so I, uh, it needs to be magic damage and probably fast because people are going to be coming real soon. Um, the only thing I can do is like throw something else at it, which is not magic damage. That's all I got. I immediately put my hands up to it and cast burning hands on it. Okay. No, no save involved. Uh, deck save. If this wall is a deck save. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, three D six. Let's no plus uh, eight, ten damage. You watch the flames kick out, and now under the flame uh, and the extended, uh, the extended like cast of this burning hands, you can see the expanse of this arcane shield, and illuminated by the magical flame um, and by the solar flame, you can see a humanoid presence pushing and fighting through it. You can see this like all very ghostly and faint, uh, a knight, a shining armor, classic knight figure, helm and cape uh, uh, coloration is, is lost through the veil, um, but it is pounding and trying to fight and burst back through. You've done some damage, not enough. At this point, um, you can hear kind of a presence making its way up the stairs. Several presences. Andy, hit this thing again with magic. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try. Um, Nettie, can you use magic, even hitting it with magic, with your, like, psychic weird shit? Uh, <laughs> yeah. say it needs to be, like, a person. I think that's the one thing that we have to check. Hmm? If it's, like, whether she has to be targeting a humanoid or something like that. Oh, I see. With, uh, with the dreadful strikes or the favored foe? Let's see dreadful strikes. You couldn't use favorite strikes. foe. It's not a person, uh, necessarily. Dreadful strikes would potentially count, but only that element would count, not your whole attack. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, yeah, and it just says creature. What's yeah. the damage for dual, uh, roll on that? Uh, 1d4. Mm, so it's probably not going to be high enough. But it can be cumulative. Like, let's all attack at the same yeah, time. Yeah, like, I'm going to try again, if you're, if you're okay with that, Kyle. Well, let's just do all four of you. If there's anything you're going to do, we'll do it all at once. Let's do so it. That's a cool like combo move. Mm -hmm. I've also got Entangle, but I think I need vines around the area. Yeah. If I'll use two swords, would that be two D4s? One for each blade? Yeah. Yep. I'll I'll do burning hands again then. Okay. I only Kev, rolled a 12. Kev, do you want to suck the energy out of this thing? You want to okay. happily do that. Could you? Uh, Could he? I do need, uh, that could be interesting. I do need, uh, Ali, I need you to make the two attacks with your blades to see if you can break past the barrier. Andy, 12 does not get past. Yeah, okay. Uh, 17 to hit. That'll do. Okay. I did six fire damage for this second cast of Burning Hands. It's pretty low for 3d6. I know. Uh, two and two for me. You need to be out and fucking you. Know. Four two, dreadful two, strikes. We're up to twenty-five points of damage. Can Kev try his thing? Do you want uh, to, Kev? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so twenty-five points of damage as uh Andy, you try again slamming your staff, but it just kind of glances off and you slip off to the side. Augustus, you summon the solar flare within and again fire. <laughs> You can see the knight pushing, and you can see the buckling and bending of the of the ward as he's pushing. Uh, uh, Enid, two wild strikes, and you can see the flare of some of that uh, psychic, I believe, energy just kind of like glancing through. And it, you see like almost like cutting through the barrier where your blades cut through before it like mends itself. A decent amount of damage put down thus far as to crane you step up. You're going to attempt to drain the energy. It's pretty cool. Hopefully it doesn't kill oh. you. I rolled a 12. This is uh, like the attack roll. Yeah. What's the bonus? Energy drain plus five. Yeah. Okay. 17. Definitely. So we're not going to worry about damage on this one because the damage being consequential, but this is an interesting use of your energy drain. Your physiology 
in this case, in this like um, energy force field that is happening here. It's not applicable to all magic necessarily, um, but this temporary breaking down of this ward, um, you do sense that you could reach out and try to consume some of it and try to weaken it and break through it. However, um, there is a chance that it is too much for you to handle in such intense quantities as it will flow through you. So as you reach out to touch and you begin to siphon the energy off, you watch as uh, Decrane reaches in and pierces in and his entire hand up to the elbow begins to illuminate with his uh, radiance. Hair <laughs> begins to fly and flutter and begin to uh, uh, alight at the tips uh, and just begin to kind of scr- crackle and spark with static electricity. I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Uh, a seven. Mm, what do you add to Decrain, that? You all watch this energy just <laughs> course through, through, and you Fuck watch through. the skeleton in his form visible as his entire body is illuminated from within. You can see uh, his entire physiology, not humanoid in the same way as anyone you've ever seen. Just as the doors blast inward and you can see five skeletons rush in to battle with you and we will pick up there. Oh no! Oh no! Oh god, that is a good pushing. Oh man. Oh boy. Oh boy.